Okay, you can't reclaim host, please. Okay, so I welcome you to day two of the School of Supernatural. And um, it feels good to announce or to share that uh, people are beginning to have experiences already in the supernatural, which is what this is all about. We don't have to wait till day seven or day eight or day 10 to start having a, you, you, you ought to have started even before the school started whilst you were preparing. So I, I was glad when I began to read um, people's experiences already that are already getting hooked up in the spirit and making things happen, shifting dimensions, even carrying people from one dimension into another, carrying people into realms to reset them, to free people and also to, 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 in fact, I like one, to deal with certain people. Amen. So I'm glad that this is already happening. So I welcome you once again to the two of um, the School of Supernatural. Um, Yesterday we have we had two sessions in the in the one the first one in the morning laying the foundations as when talked about ordained for exploits it was actually uh, the 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 first foundation teaching on the school um, and yesterday evening of course we moved it further and. We, if we were to take a look, a swipe at the narration, we'll, we'll take it as, you know, shifting from your natural, natural propensity, the natural tendencies into your supernatural, because in the natural, you become a neutral potter that anybody can use, any power can use, any spirit can access to make use of. But when you shift into the realms of the supernatural, you have the control. You become the one using spirits, not spirits using you, because you 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 have the 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 power. You have the you have the unction. You have the ability to determine what spirit you cooperate with to to make things happen in your realm. So today we are going to take it further, and we have somebody who is um, a third generation. Uh, you know, who have been operating in this realm in the third generation that will be expanding more. Like I said yesterday, I love his style of teaching because he brings a flavor to it where he shares, he literally brings, um, his teaching comes alive through um, sharing experiences, first-hand experiences, experiences he had while he was growing up with the father, um, experiences he had while he was growing up with his 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 family was just a family of, of the, that operated in the supernatural. His auntie, you know, <laughs> that even the, that's the father's eldest sister, they were all operating in that realm. So who better to bring out the practicality of these things? Amen. So you see that we are jumping right into the heart of this discussion. So this is going to be, what I'm doing is I'm bringing all the ministers, just like I did yesterday, to lay their foundation. Then later they will start building, we'll bring them back to start building on what they have started. So. To have his introductory class today, we have Pastor Taiwo Akinyemi. So take the floor. So, sir, you'll unmute. With Jesus' joy, receive him to just share with us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah. much, sir. You are blessed, sir. I you. Thank you for what you are doing in the body. We appreciate your labor of love. Amen. Thank you. Sorry. Is my voice clear enough? Very clear. Loud and clear. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Just take me as I am. I'm not a video person. This is my first time of even having a Zoom meeting. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> one of my, somebody has to help me out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. I'm honored. Thank you for the privilege. I'm honored to serve the saints. Okay. Let's let's dig into the thing. We are talking about the supernatural and the easiest way to walk in the supernatural is being conscious of your supernatural nature. It, the supernatural becomes the norm when your consciousness is the fact that you are already a supernatural being. You are not a physical being trying to become supernatural, but that is the lie that they have sold to the church for years. And that's what many believers have been trying to do. They see themselves as natural, even in Christ. Now, they want to become supernatural. You don't become supernatural. You see, there are two different things. Becoming supernatural and manifesting supernatural are two different things. You are supernatural. You are not becoming. But even though you are supernatural, you may not manifest your nature. So you have to be conscious of the fact that you are supernatural by nature. The same way you tell a little child that you are a human being, behave as a human being. Stop crawling on, four, on the floor. You are not a goat. Stop shouting like a dog. You are not a dog. So what are you telling? The, you don't make the person a human being. You did not make him a human being. You are just calling his attention and his consciousness to the fact that he's a human being and there's a way. Human beings behave. Hallelujah. Please, am I still audible? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, thank you so much. So, when you train your child to walk proper, you train your child to pronounce words after you when they were little. You, you, know, when, you train your children when they were babies. Say, papa, dada. Now, you are not making that child a human being. Right from the womb, that child is a human being. So, but you are training him that, okay, this is how human beings, this is how they pronounce or this is how they speak. So, the same thing with, that's why Jesus called it being born again. Born. And he said, if you are born, you will see the kingdom. So the supernatural becomes the norm when we approach it from that angle. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the privilege of sonship that we have with you. Because as you are, so are we. We have the same nature and the same life with you. And we are conscious of this fact. And thank you, Jesus, for making all this possible. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for instructing us in righteousness and guiding us into all truth. We believe and declare that we are blessed with seeing eyes, areas, and understanding us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay. The supernatural should be approached from the angle of your nature as a believer. Because if you don't know that by nature you are supernatural, you will think you are not supernatural. Then you want to do some things to become supernatural. But if you know that the supernatural is already your nature, so what do you do to nature? You manifest your nature. Then you will know that you don't have to go and pay any price to become supernatural. Have you had something like when God's super comes upon your natural? <laughs> the thing is, there is nothing like God's super coming upon your natural. The day you are born again, you are, you, you are born supernatural. You are born supernatural. John chapter 3, Jesus said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. 
Marvel not that I say unto you that you must be born again. That which is born of spirit is spirit. Then he now said in verse uh, 8 that just like the wind, he said the wind bloweth wherever it listed. The wind bloweth wherever it listed. He said you cannot predict its movement, but you cannot deny its effect. And now and he ended that statement by saying, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. He didn't say so shall everyone that is born of the spirit be. That was not what he said. So he said the way the wind cannot be predicted. You cannot see the wind, but you can see the effect. You cannot see the wind, but you can see the effect. So he said, and the wind blows wherever it listens, where it decides to go. That's where it goes. And nothing can stop on the way of the winds. In fact, they will tell you to, to avoid the wind when it's begin to move. They will tell you to take over, run away. Why? You cannot stop it. So Jesus said the wind blew it wherever it listed. He said you cannot predict the movement, but you cannot deny the effects, and you cannot stand on its path. So he now ended that statement by saying, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So is every believer. So is every child of God. So he didn't so, so shall everyone be. <laughs> After he's born of the Spirit, he will now do something, then he will now become supernatural. You know, he said, you are supernatural by nature, by birth. He said, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now, the question is, am I born of the Spirit? If your answer to that question is yes, Jesus said you are like wind. That lists wherever it, it uh, that blows wherever it lists, it lists, and there is nobody that can stop the movement. So if you are born of the spirit, you are spirit, according to Jesus. And if you are born of the spirit, you are like winds that cannot be stopped. And you are like the wind that goes wherever you decide. So supernatural becomes normal day-to-day -day experiences in the life of believers when they are grounded in the truth that by nature they are supernatural. You don't tell a human being to go and do something to become a human being, but you train him how to maximize the nature of the human nature that he has. You train him how to use his brain, train him how to use his legs, train him how to use his hands, train him how to use his uh, mouth. So, but you are not you are not the one that made him human being. He's born a full human being. So the same thing, you are not making believers supernatural. Believers are born supernatural. But you can instruct them to use what they have. To behave their nature. Just like what I said at the beginning, that when you see a child that is that is beginning to walk normally on two, on his two feet, now crawling. You will shout at him that, my friend, stand up and walk normal. Or you see him um, walking somehow, maybe he's not walking straight. And it's not that he's deformed or crippled or has any challenge in that regard. So you tell him, my friend, I walk properly. So you, <laughs> you are not the one that made him human, but you are just instructing him how human beings work. So in the kingdom, because I'm talking to the believers, like um, Apostle said uh, when he was talking, he said human beings can partner with spirits to determine what happens in their environment, their locality. Both the believers and non-believers have access to the spirit realm. And both believers and non-believers can partner with spirits. But what I'm saying is this. Believers should be more conscious of the fact that by nature they are supernatural. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Bible says, He that joined to the Lord is one spirit. Like when I was teaching on engaging the word on SWAT, I said something that when you are studying the scriptures, train your mind to always look for what the author had in mind when he was writing. Train your mind to get into the mind of the author so that you will know what the author is emphasizing. You know that 1 Corinthians 6, 17. 
the when Paul was saying it, it, it okay, he first said it that joined to the allot is one flesh, but it that joined to the spirit and it that joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Do you know religious uh, people they pick it that joined to allot, but that was not Paul's emphasis. Paul was not writing that passage to emphasize the implication of when a man joined himself to a lot, to an lot. He just used that one to illustrate something because he wanted to point to a greater reality in Christ. But sadly enough, the church have most of the time been missing what the authors were trying to point to. And by going to things that the author is trying to use to communicate their spiritual realities in Christ. And devil likes it when the church misses it like that. You see, the emphasis of Paul is he that joined to the Lord has become one flesh. No, he's used that as an analogy to present something greater, to present something that is real, to present something that he wants you to focus on. He said, it's just like Paul saying, if he that joined to our Lord has become one flesh with him, how much for he that now joined to the Lord? That's why I said, he that joins with the Lord has become one spirit with him. But the church did not pick that one. And that was what Paul wanted us to pick. They now went and picked he that joined to our Lord and wrote books on that one. Danger of uh, uh, fornication, dangers of adultery, danger of premarital sex, danger of... The emphasis of Paul is he that joined to the Lord. And because that was not what the church picked, they were not conscious of their oneness with Christ. Hallelujah. Now they are they they know they know the consequence of okay living recklessly living promiscuously they know the implication, and they've written volumes of but that was not what Paul was communicating. The same way when Paul was talking about marriage, he said I just use this as an analogy to explain a greater reality which is Christ and the church. He said when Bible says therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. And the two of them shall become one. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery. So he had to look for something that he can use in order to communicate a deeper spiritual truth. So he now said, The way a man leaves his wife, his father and his mother, and cleaves to his uh, wife, and they become one, the two of them become one. He said, So that's the same thing that happened between the church and Christ. That Christ has cleft to the church, and the two have become one. You see, Paul, in his writings, wanted the church to focus on our oneness with the Godhead. But even up until now, that statement I just made, our oneness with the Godhead, some religious mind cannot take it. Are you saying you are equal with the Father and Son and the Spirit? No. He has brought us, the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, they are not um, insecure. They, did, they were the one who initiated the whole thing. And Christ has brought us inside the Godhead. He said, I and my Father will be in you, and you will be in us. Even and all of us will be one, even as I and my Father are one. John chapter 5, John chapter 10, John chapter 8. Why am I saying this? If you are not conscious of your oneness with the Father, Oneness with the Son, oneness with the Holy Spirit. If you are not conscious of your oneness with the Godhead, you will think that you are detached from them. And when there is a need to manifest the supernatural, you will think that you have to connect to them. You have to do something so that you go and get the power. But if you are conscious of your oneness with them, you, you will know that even if you are in a bus, <laughs> because you are in them, they are in you. Supernatural becomes the norm. Even if you are eating, Supernatural becomes the norm. Hallelujah. That is the way to, to go about it and make it easy. When we approach it from the angle of you being supernatural by nature, then we are, what we are, the moment that truth sinks into you, then you now know that manifesting the supernatural is just like saying, just manifest your nature. And if it's your nature, you don't realize it. You just manifest it. Like when I was teaching on Apostle Samonora's um, program, was it last year? I said, I said, do you know why they call it 
choir practice. They call it um, choir riaza. I said they call it choir riaza because they were not the original singer. So they wanted to present another person's song. So they have to riaz and sing it like the original composer. But if you wake the person that has originally composed and sang that song, if you wake him up in the middle of the night, he will not riaz. He will just sing it to you. That's why if you have watched the interview of these famous musicians who are, who are now advanced in age, so the interviewer may point their attention to one of their songs. And the song may be, maybe that song was originally written and sang for the first time in 1970. And now we are in 2023. And the interviewer would say, ah, I remember your, what's, the, what's your first album? So the, the musician would say, we mentioned the name. Now say, ah, which year? Say 1973. Can you sing the song? Can you sing it? And you will see right there on the at the studio, right there, the person will sing the song. He will not tell the interviewer, let me go and rehearse. I did not, I did not prepare for this question. I didn't know you asked me to sing that song. It was his song. It was a song. Ever prepared, ever ready to sing it. Why? He composed it and sang it originally. So if they now say, okay, sing your a song from your first album, the, the person will sing it without blinking an eye. At the end, you see interview now, interview will not be clapping. Wow, wow, people will not be whining. But if they now call somebody from the audience, I say, come and sing this thing, the song. The person, you see the person will first cough. <laughs> and then I say, you say, no, no, I will sing, I will still sing it. I'm coming, I'm coming. Why? He's not the original singer. So you don't rehearse your nature. You don't rehearse what you produce. Hallelujah. So the same thing with the supernatural. So the believer should be manifesting the supernatural 24 7. They wake you up in the middle of the night, the supernatural should be the what you manifest. But this will become reality when you are conscious of your oneness with Christ. I'm not talking down on prayer. I'm not talking down on um praying uh, okay, spending time with uh, the father, meditating in scripture. But do you know there are some instances where you have not prayed. You have not studied the scriptures. But there was, there was an emergency. There is an emergency. Will you now tell them, let me go and pray first? Or let me go and study the scripture first? So, at such a time, what will bear you out is your consciousness of the fact that you are one with the Godhead. That's why I'm emphasizing it. It's your consciousness of that truth that I and my Father are one. You see, Jesus defended the supernatural that manifested from the angle of his sonship and his nature and his oneness with the father john chapter 5 john chapter 10 john chapter 8 he said i am my father alone they, they accuse him of blasphemy that how can you a human being say god is your father how can you a human being say god is your father so he now said, if I do not the works, you see, his response to their question was this. He said, if I do not the works of my father, then don't believe my claim. He said, but if I do the same thing that my father does, then I'm his son. So what is he saying? That when you are conscious of the fact that you are a child of God and you and your father has the same life, then you can manifest the same works that your father manifests. You can do the same thing that your father does. And that's why in John chapter 9, he repeated this, uh, John chapter 5, he repeated the same thing. He said the father shows the son all that he does. And whatsoever the father does, the son does likewise also. Hallelujah. He said whatever the father is doing, the son can do it. Why? Because it's the same life. And that was why Jesus Christ still said the same thing, that the works that I do, the believers will do the same thing, and greater, because I go to my Father. Greater in the sense that I will now bring them to where I am in glory. You know, he limited, he, he limited himself for the sake of redemption. But when he now say I'm going back, he said those things that I left behind, I'm entering into them. That's why he now said greater. The works that I do shall they do also. Why? The same nature, the same life. So when we approach the supernatural from the angle of nature and life, 
it removes the works. It removes the works. And then whatever works you now engage in becomes works of righteousness. Because you are not doing those things to manifest the supernatural. You are doing those things with the consciousness that you are already supernatural. So those works are not price that you are paying to become supernatural. Hallelujah. And each time I teach on the supernatural from the angle of nature and life, people manifest the supernatural easily. And uh, like Apostle said, that, like um, Apostle Clem said, that I teach by sharing experiences. You know why I love sharing experiences and testimonies? When I share them, you know that it's not those things are not reserved for some people. Like some apostles make, make you believe in Africa that there are some things that you cannot do. There is nothing a child of God cannot do when it comes to the supernatural. Jesus said so. The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works. So make Jesus your authority on everything. So any apostle that is not teaching what Jesus, what is consistent with Jesus' teaching, don't listen to him because you will rob yourself. So it is the same life. And when you know that it's the same life, then you know that you can do the same thing. So when we approach the supernatural from the angle of nature, it becomes very easy. And last year, December, I was teaching at um, a camp meeting in Anambra, Pastor Ruben Daniel's church. I will still be here this December by God's grace. Then we were teaching them because the, the theme of the camp meeting is supernatural life. So, and we were, I was teaching them that to manifest the supernatural as a believer consistently, not once in a while thing. You have to be conscious of the fact that the supernatural is your life. It's your nature. And I read 1 John chapter 5, 11 to 13 to them, where John said, I write unto you that you may know. He's talking about believers, those who have received that. He said, I write unto you that you may know that you have Zoe, the very life that flows in the Godhead. And he said, this life is the same life that flows in Jesus Christ. He said, this life is the same life that is in his son, Jesus Christ. That whosoever has the son, has Zoe, has the life of God. And that means whatever God can do with that life and by, by that life, you, you can do it also. Because the Zoe in you is not inferior to the one in God. It's the same Zoe. That's what the scriptures are. And that was, it's not by accident that at the end, they started referring to John that had the revelation of life and nature, of divinity. That had the, John that had the revelation that every believer has divine nature. Every believer is not alone that is divine. Saint Taiwo is the divine. Because they, said they put him inside boiling oil according to church history that he did not burn. He did not fry him. They did everything to kill him. <laughs> he did not die. Why? He's conscious. He emphasized that life, that nature. And that should be our consciousness. When the supernatural becomes your consciousness, manifesting the supernatural becomes your normal experiences. My dad used to say something to me that, Taiwo, when Christ becomes your consciousness, Christ becomes your experience. When Christ becomes your consciousness, because you will always manifest your consciousness. He did something strange. You see, as believers, we shouldn't be using the word strange or supernatural, honestly. Because what we call supernatural is the natural man that should be referring to our hearts as supernatural, not the believer. Why? Because if something is your nature, it's not supernatural to you. It's natural to you. That's why it is called nature. Read 
if you read the Bible, anytime God reverts to his act, you see, God only used the word miracles. If God speaks expressly through a man in the Old Testament, what we hear is my works. We will not say my miracles. Men are the one who use the word miracles. Because if God will call something a miracle, that means God himself was baffled. <laughs> that means that thing to God was miraculous. But do you know that nothing is miraculous to God? So God will not look at anything and call it a miracle. Because for God to say this is a miracle, means that even God himself was shocked. <laughs> but what he normally used in the Old Testament was my works. My works. And when Jesus came, as I performing miracles, Jesus used the same word. The works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works. And when he was talking about the miracles that I perform, he said, if I do not the works of my father. And when he was about to give sight to a man that, according to history, was born without eyeball in John chapter 9. When the Bible says Jesus molded clay and put it in empty sockets and told him how to go and wash. He said, My father will they even call it walking of miracles. So we use the word miracles, wonders, because we are still we have still not been granted in our consciousness. And for, for lack of better words, because if we say miracles, then that means to us those things are miracles. But do you know that to a child of God, nothing should be regarded as miracle, as a miracle. Why? Because something that is your nature is not miraculous to you. It's not they use the word natural for something that is natural with you. That's why you hear something like natural talent, natural ability. They will not say miraculous talent. Miracle, no, natural talent. So the, the word supernatural should be the unbelievers trying to, exp, uh, trying to explain our natural acts. Hallelujah. Are we still following? The word supernatural, yes, miracles, miracles, signs and wonders should be coming from the lips of the unbelievers trying to describe, describe our acts. They should be the ones saying among themselves, did you see the miracles that that guy just performed? Oh boy, did you see the wonders? We shouldn't be the ones saying, ah, look at the miracles I performed. No, because to us, it shouldn't be miracle. We should be saying, see the works. Because that's our works. Because it should be our norm. It should be our norm. So the unbeliever should be the one referring to our works as miracles, signs, wonders. And that's why in the Old Testament, God will say, my works, I will show my works. And Jesus said, the works that I do, talking about miracles, signs and wonders, he said, the works that I do, shall you do also, and greater works than this. Greater works than this. So we, we should be using the word works. It's, if I do not the works of my father, believe not me that I may, don't believe my claim that I'm a child of God. Because when the supernatural, because the reason I still have to use the word supernatural is for lack of better word. Paul said there were things that human language could not convey. So now, when we approach the supernatural from the angle of nature, then the believer will know that they are already supernatural. If I can still use the word. Why? Because by nature they are. They are both natural. Hallelujah. Then they will now know that the thing can happen with ease. Because you don't struggle to manifest your nature. You don't struggle to manifest your nature. There are things that human beings do naturally. Because those things are consistent with their nature. Those things are the expression of their nature. And anytime they now find difficulty in expressing those things, they will say there is a problem. Just like Human beings are to urinate with ease. But when a person is finding it difficult to urinate with ease, the person will know that there is a problem. 
Why? Because by nature, human beings will not struggle to urinate by nature. Human beings will be able to sleep with ease by nature. But the moment a person is finding it difficult to sleep, they even have a name for it medically. <laughs> then they will know that they will diagnose it as a problem and they will give drugs to the person so that it can sleep. So the same thing with the believer. Believer should be able to manifest the supernatural with ease. Why? Because it is their nature. So when the believer is not manifesting the supernatural with ease, then there is a problem. But sadly enough, we have a lot of apostles and prophets telling the believer that it's not easy to manifest the supernatural. And showing them the price to they need to pray, the price they need to pay. No, it's just like telling a normal human being that he needs to pay a price to urinate easily, to urinate with his. Because if he cannot urinate with his, then there is a is then that there is a problem. I mean that if a believer cannot manifest the supernatural with his, then there is a problem. But no, these apostles. Tell the believers that it is normal for you not to be able to manifest the supernatural. And when they now see somebody that is manifesting it with ease, they will say, be careful. Be careful. It's using no cut. No, no. Look at the look at the mindset. They believe that somebody with occult ability can manifest the supernatural with ease. But a believer with divine nature has to first struggle and struggle until it breaks through. Breaks through before he now starts manifesting the supernatural. Look at how the devil has deceived the church. But when we approach this thing from the angle of nature, all those lies will be thrown out of the church, and everybody will be moving in the supernatural. That was the secret in the book of Acts. And that was why Philip, a deacon in the church in Jerusalem, who go to Samaria, and mind you, he did not go with intercessors to go and bind the prince of Samaria first, like we do. <laughs> oh, I want to hold crusade in Samaria. But before I go to that crusade, let me go with a group of intercessors so that I will bind the prince of Samaria. Then I will now go and do it. He ran away from persecution. But they were conscious of their nature. And remember I said, if it's your nature, you don't rehearse. You just manifest. Hallelujah. He ran away from persecution. He did not plan that crusade. He said to himself, okay, they did not allow us again. They are uh, terror terrorizing us in Jerusalem. Okay, I can preach in Samaria. And he ran to Samaria. The Bible says he fled to Samaria. The Bible says they scattered. And guess what? The Bible says wherever they scattered to, miracles and wonders were happening through them. He said they went everywhere preaching and God confirming the words. So Philip went with the consciousness of his nature as supernatural. He went with consciousness that mm, I'm a child of God. By nature, I'm supernatural. And he started preaching glorified Christ, exalted Christ. Not Christ that is struggling with the devil as if he has not defeated the devil. And Bible says a sorcerer. Now, look at Acts chapter 8. Bible says a sorcerer has bewitched, a sorcerer had bewitched the entire city for years. And that sorcerer had demonstrated some things to the extent that they, the people started regarding him as I call him, they gave him nickname, the great power of God. That means that sorcerer had demonstrated a measure of supernatural that baffled all of them. And for him to succeed in bewitching the entire city, he must have wowed them with the occult abilities, supernatural power. But when Philip landed a deacon that ran away from persecution, without 41 days VG, like some apostles will teach you now, you think you can just uh, wake up one day and be casting out devil? You think you can just wake up one day and be healing people? You think I can wake up and be healing? Yeah. Before I before I before I saw the first person healed under my ministry, I fasted for thirty one years. Congratulations! Clap for yourself. Then Jesus never said. <laughs> Philip ran from persecution, but when he landed, Bible says he started preaching Christ and casting out devils. And Bible said the sorcerer. Simon, he said, when Simon the sorcerer saw the miracles that Philip performed, he said, oh boy, I think that I get power. See this one. He said, the reason we have not really been investing the occultists into the kingdom is because as long as we, you see, the occultists should be the one looking at us and say, wow, wow, wow. See, see, see power. I think, I think that I get power. 
but look at what this one is just even playing with. But instead, the reverse is the case. Preachers are the one telling the believers, okay, the title of my sermon today is Overcoming the Power of Witchcraft. You see, I will never preach overcoming the power of witchcraft. I will rather teach you how to move in the power of God. Because when you say overcoming the power of witchcraft, then you will be forced to talk about what the power of witchcraft can do, what the witches can do with their abilities. And now your consciousness, you know, you are shifting saints' consciousness away from the greatness, immeasurable power of God inside them to the abilities of witches and wizards. So at the end of what you call someone, Overcoming the power of witchcraft. Oh yeah, everybody, let's stand to our feet and begin to pray against every witchcraft operation in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus. Every... Now, you just succeeded eh, in making them more conscious of the ability of witches than their own ability as sons. Overcoming the power. You can never hear such sermon on my lips. I will instead show you, I will instead teach you the immeasurable greatness of God's power. And that was what Pastor Ruben Daniel did in his church. Instead of teaching them Overcoming the witch, uh, overcoming the power of witchcraft, dealing with the uh, demonic witchcraft power, whatever, all those things. He said, if he did series, the power at work in us, the power at work in us. And by the time he's done with that teaching, children in his church <laughs> they collect crutches from cripples, cast out devils. A, a boy was coming from church with the parents, and a madman known in the neighborhood for years, violent, was coming on the same side of the road. And the parents grabbed the boy. They grabbed the boy and wanted to cross to the other side in order to avoid the madman. And the boy removed his hand from the parents. Removed his hand from their hands. He said, why are we crossing? Because the boy has had the power of, the power at work in us. He said, why are we crossing? If we cross now and we avoid him, who will set him free? <laughs> Who will set him free? See the mindset. But if Pastor Rubedani has taught them about the power of the power of witchcraft, you know, say you see that man that is roaming the streets. That's the power of witchcraft. Is 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 witchcraft that turned him to mad person. People will become more conscious of the ability of witches and wizards and the occultists than the ability than their own ability as sons. He that comes from above is above all. The boy said, "Who will now set him free?" Ha. And the boy stood his ground. That's why Jesus said, when you, when you exchange your adult mind for baby's mind, children's mind, he said you will see the outworkings of the kingdom consistently in your life. He said, unless you are converted and become like little children. The boy stood. The parents were looking what will happen. They said, few feet away between them. They were about to meet each other. The boy looked at the Madman, I said, every spirit, every evil spirit that has made you mad. You know, children, they don't know protocol about prayer. They don't know how to watch their prayer. That simplicity of a child. By saying the mouth of babes, he has perfected praise. <laughs> he has ordained strength to shame his enemy. The boy said, I, I command the evil spirit that makes you mad to leave you now in Jesus' name. And the madman fell under the power, and God delivered. The, because the pastor taught them the power at work in us, he did not teach them the power of witchcraft. The power of sorcery. All those nonsense must be thrown out of it. That is not the message for the church. He said, Ephesians 4, that the five folds, the ministry gift, they are to equip the saints with the knowledge of their realities and abilities in Christ, so that when the saints go out there, they will manifest their true nature, and they will be able to carry out the work of ministry with his, in their sphere. You see, the work of ministry are to be done in your sphere, in the marketplace. But you come to the uh, meetings of the believers, to be instructed and equipped. And how do we, how do they equip you for the work of ministry? By remembering you, who you are. Because the book of James said, if you look at yourself and you forget who you are, you will not manifest the reality of who you are, the reality of your identity. So when you now come, the five fold is to remind you who you are, so that it becomes your consciousness. They are to remind you what you have. They are to remind you what you can do. 
But sadly, when people come to be reminded of who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ, and what they can do in Christ, when they come to be reminded, no, the fivefold we begin to talk to them about the power of the devil, the power of witchcraft. So you need to wake up 12 a.m. and 1 a.m. because that's when the witches go to meeting. The consciousness is still the witches. <laughs> But when you understand the dynamics <laughs> of the spirit realm, you know that the spirit realm is not subject to midnight, midday, afternoon, <laughs> evening. Because right there, time does not count. Time does not matter. Space does not matter. You know that some people that they have taught them, ah, you are surrounded by enemies. You're all those, your auntie and your uncle. So if you, if you love yourself, don't go to the village. I met a man many years ago. He said they told him not to go to the village. So he loved to see his father, but the prophet, several prophets have warned him not to go to his village. And he's a believer. So he said because they, he has a lot of enemies and uh, they, are, they are dealing with him spiritually, they are after him spiritually. I said, nobody is after you spiritually. He said, what do I mean? And he's a minister in his uh, denomination. I said, nobody, I said, the truth is that you just imagine, you are just imagining that they are after you spiritually, that nobody is after you spiritually. He said, what, what do I mean? All those prophets, are they lying? I said, nobody's. I said, okay, Toby, let me explain to you. If they are after you spiritually, it doesn't matter whether you go to your village or not. If it's spiritually, because in the realm of the spirit, it doesn't matter whether you go or not. They will track you. <laughs> because this physical realm is subject to that realm. I said, so you are in Lagos, you now think you have run away from your spiritual enemy. No, they are not spiritual enemy. They are physical enemy. Banned by location. So if I said they actually after you spiritually, forget. If you like, go to go to India. Like Apostle Clem said, he said he was in Lagos. Is it Lagos or where, sir? Where he said, and they initiated him into a court in China. So someone now said, don't go to your village because of those witches. They are not after you. Are the one imagining that they are after you? Because if they are really after you, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to go to your village. A, a man told a man told a story. He said he was afraid of his uncle based on what the parents have told them about that uncle that was very double -income. So he was not afraid of the uncle. Then he lost his parents. So when he lost his parents, he had to go home. And his own parents were older than that uncle. His own father, rather. The father was older than the uncle. He now lost his father. So that's why when he went to the village, he was thinking, am I going to avoid this uncle? Because all of them, they were family. That means the uncle will be at the barrier. So, and he has been avoiding this uncle because the father, his late father told him that he should avoid the uncle, that the uncle is diabolic, I don't be coming no more. If you want to see me, just uh, maybe I will come and see you in Lagos or we will talk on phone. And he has been following the father's rule instruction. But when the father died, he had to go to the village. That means he will see the uncle. So he said when he now saw the uncle after the barrier, the uncle now said, he said he, he was forced to go and see the uncle in the house. Because now they just did the barrier, we will have to go and see the uncle. Then the father that warned him not to come and see the uncle, the father is gone. So he felt trapped. So he now said, okay, let me just go. He said when he now got to the uncle's house, Say strangely enough, the uncle looked at him and said, you and your siblings, your father has poisoned your mind that I'm a wicked person. I said, uncle, it's not like that. He said, shut up. He said, your father has warned you to avoid me so that I will not hurt you that I'm double because so that I will not deal with you and your siblings. He said, come. He said, if I'm that wicked and I really want to deal with you. He said, it doesn't matter whether you are in Lagos or wherever. He said, you think staying in Lagos can now make you to escape me if I really want to deal with you. He said that's how the uncle now told him, follow me to my backyard. They now moved to the backyard of the uncle. He said there was a pot there. The uncle just wiped his hand on top of the water. He now said, look at inside. <laughs> and this man said, when he looked inside the water, inside the pot, he saw his house in Lagos. He said, the man now said, is this not your house in Lagos? The man did another thing. He said, is this not, are these not your cars in Lagos? The man did another, is this not your bedroom? And your dad, your, your father lied to you that I was after you. The man said he was shaking. <laughs> the 
The opener say, if I really want to deal with you, is this not your house? I don't have to be in Lagos to deal with you. And I don't have to know your house in Lagos. I can know things I want to know about you here in my, in my compound. The man said he was shaking. <laughs> he said he was shaking. So that was like, and I told them, I said, you are the one assuming that you have spiritual enemy. I said, you have physical enemy. If, if changing physical location can stop them from harassing you, then you have a physical enemy. Hallelujah. But if the occultist could do that, how much? More? You know, in the Old Testament, they said concerning Elisha, that the thing that you said in your bedroom, O king, there's a prophet in Israel that we hear everything, even the thing you send in your bedroom. But do you know the abilities you have in Christ are far greater than the one Elisha walked in? That is why the message should not be the power of witchcraft. No, the message will be the power of God in the believer. Paul said, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above, all you can ask for things, according to the power that, that works in you. Then, in another place, Ephesians 1, he said, he prayed that the eyes of the believer will enlighten, the spiritual will enlighten, the eyes of understanding will be enlightened to know the immeasurable greatness of his power inside us who believe. Now, I was teaching on enlightenment some few days ago. I said some apostles have lied to you, especially in Africa, that you think eh, you, are not, eh, you, are, you have not gone on long fast all your life. You have not fasted for 40 days at a stretch. You have not fasted for 21 days at a stretch. And if you are not fasting like that, long fast like that, continue, uh, consistently, that you will be a lightweight in the spirit. You will not carry weight in the spirit. I said, what a lie from the pit of it. Somebody contain God. You say it's, 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 it doesn't have weight. Somebody that can contain God is, is light in the spirit. How dare you? If I can contain God, <laughs> a person that houses God is not light. The same people will say even the glory of God is heavy. Not even God, though. His glory is heavy. <laughs> but somebody contain not the glory, contain God with all his glory and riches. And he says a light weight. You see, the problem of believers is they are not aware of who they are. They are not aware of who they are. And an apostle, <laughs> an apostle, and these apostles are saying these things with confidence. So what now makes you wait in the spirit is when you go on long fast. So the more you are fasting, the more you are gaining weight in the spirit. Nonsense. <laughs> I gained weight the day I received Christ. Every weight. <laughs> he said, I will live in them and walk in them. How dare you say somebody that God lives in and walks in his light in the spirit? Okay, believer that carries God is light in the spirit. Demon that does not even carry the devil is greater than the believer that carries God. Who deceived you? Who has deceived you? You see, the supernatural becomes the norm and we begin to do some crazy things when we know. And we address the spiritual from the angle of who we are. I carry God. Somebody says, person that will give me weight. 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 <laughs> what you are saying is, God is lighter than my fast. That's what you are just saying. And that's rubbish. That my 40 days fast is heavier than God. <laughs> and so And the same people will tell you that Elisha was an heavy weight in the spirit. Elijah was an heavy weight in the spirit. But do you know they did not contain God? He didn't walk with them and talk in them. Who has deceived you? Be careful with reason. If it's not your realities in Christ, shun it, no matter who is teaching it. A, a, a child of God that received Christ now is heavier than Satan and all the demons put together in the spirit realm. Because the moment the Holy Spirit comes to live inside a man, that man cannot be light in the spirit. It's the heaviest thing in the realm of the spirit. So, but when you begin to fast consistently, 21 days, 41 days, then you'll be gaining weight. The more you are fasting, the more you are, you are not gaining weight. You cannot gain more weight than what you, the weight you gain the day you receive the God dead into you. You can become more aware of how weighty the God in you is. Hallelujah. And what those fasting and those things, what they do, it's not that you are gaining weight. They are your soul. Is now becoming more aware of the weight you have already gained from day one that you received Christ. 
So when we approach the supernatural from the angle of nature, it becomes the norm. Hallelujah. When I taught this in Pastor Ruben Daniel's church, and I said, Jesus said, I said everything Jesus did, he did it by the life. And 1 John 5 said, it's the same life that you now have. And that was why he was so confident that you can do the same thing. Because there is no junior version of Zoe. <laughs> so some, many of you are so light in the spirit. So if the devil blows you like this, you are gone. Devil blame believers. Devil blame believers. Who is the wind? Devil or believers? Jesus said believers are the wind. You are the one that will blow him. Sakata <laughs> Burandosh. Elezina Mando Shaladabos. Agadi Brando Kabayande. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. When I taught this at Pastor Ruben Daniel's church, a sister attended the meeting. Kaya. She went back home. They cooked rice is soured. They did not want it. The mother wanted to throw away the rice, full, full pot. She said no. Because I shared testimonies how we reversed soured soup on the phone in America. You see what we are talking about? The lady was in America. Say, Pastor T, one of my Nigerian soup has soured. I said, we can reverse it. I said, do you think Jesus can reverse it? He said, yes. I said, as he is, so are we. There is no junior version of Zoe. We reverse the thing on the, on the phone right there. She said it was even sweeter than when she cooked it. And I shared the testimony. Dr. Vass shared it on SWAT. A member of SWAT cooked rice. The younger sister visited her. She was going to work. She forgot the rice they had already put in a small cooler. By the time she came back in the evening, the rice had soured. She reversed it. Because if it is life, anybody, can, anybody with that life can do it. That's the beauty of it. If it is nature, anybody with that nature can do it. But if it's not life and nature, then you have to pay the price. But if it's life and nature, you don't need to pay the price. All you have to know is for somebody to remind you that you have the same life and nature. And that's what, Paul, uh, that's what John was now saying in 1 John 5. He said, I write unto you to remind you that you have Zoe. And this life is the same life that is in the Son, Jesus Christ. 1 John 5, 11 to 13. Whosoever has the Son has the same life. And Jesus did everything he did by that life. And that's why he's confident that anybody with that life can do the same thing. And that was why Peter... He says, such as I have, I give unto you. Conscious of that life. <laughs> the lady, when the lady said, mom, we are not going to throw away this thing, we are going to reverse it. The mother said, hey, how do you mean? He said, if Jesus is in this family, are we going to throw away the food? The mother said, but you are not Jesus. The lady shouted as he is, or am I? It's the same life. Pastor T said it's the same nature. The same life that Jesus will use to reverse it is the same life that I have now. And she reversed it. You see, that's the beauty of it. When you know that it is life. The question you now have to ask yourself is, do I have that life? And if your answer to that question is yes, then I can do the same thing. When you know that it's nature, do I have the nature? Yes. If I have the nature, I can do the same thing. No price to pay. You see, they are telling you to pay those prices so that they will appear superior to you. And you'll be looking at them as if they are special. You see, the supernatural is not reserved for very few. The supernatural is the nature and the life of God, finding expression through the sons of God. Simple. And every believer has the same life and the same nature. There is no junior version of the Holy Spirit. Like we have in Africa now, senior prophet and junior prophet. There is no junior Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kashata Balego Brandes. Hallelujah. I thought on invisibility. Part of our abilities and realities in Christ that we can become invisible. I practice it, I've experienced it. I thought it that it is your nature, it is your ability, that I did not pay any power for any price for it. You don't have to pay price, you don't pay price for it. They are your nature, just manifest it. And a guy manifested it twice, became invisible twice. Hallelujah. When my wallet materialized and I shared the testimony, a dear brother in Germany called me, Pastor T, I just lost my wallet. But I read your testimony in the art of meditation, your book. Then if it can happen to you, it can happen to me. Because it's, it is the life. It is our life in Zion. I said, yes. I said, you will see the, uh, the wallet. I, just, I said, just keep searching for it. You will see it. And he turned around. He said he has called police. He has traced where he had been that day. Called the police. They said they couldn't find it. Then he said all his vital documents were in the original. They were in that wallet. And after he convinced himself that it's the same life, 
if my wallet materialized and his own can materialize too because it's the same life after i convince his mind of that reality that is the same life it's not reserved to pastor t he turned took few steps and he found the wallet materialized where he has not been that day hallelujah oh shaka brandos i i shared the testimony where my dad blew on dirty water and he, be he became drinkable he became crystal clean so that i could drink i followed him to farm as a young child and i said i wanted to drink water i was thirsty and the little water we took to the farm had finished at times i've seen him multiply that water inside the inside the jerry can one small jerry can like this but on that particular day it not multiplied the water i just said okay he took me to the stream this um they have grazed these are plant people have grazed around the place so the, the water had become muddy and he stooped and blew on the water. And when he blew on the water, the thing became clear, very clean, and I drank. So I shared the testimony. You see, that's why you have to, anytime he did things like that, it was a time, oh, I did not do this thing because I'm special. So I, I did it because I'm a son of God, and any son of God can do the same. And almost all the supernatural I demonstrated before me, I've worked in about 99.99% of them. And the one that I did not even manifest, I've manifested them. While we are growing up, he lent in our shoes. He will let in me and my twin brother's shoes. He said to us, you see, I lent in this shoe because I'm a son of God. One day I asked him as a child, I said, <clears throat> he will lent in our shoes, he will lent in our clothes, and he will bring back our faded clothes to the original states. The faded clothes will be brought back to new states. Even the tongue clothes, he repaired him. <laughs> so, and I asked him as a child, I said, one day I was talking to him, I said, how do you do this thing? He now said, I will you see. When the children of Israel were on transit to, the, to, to Canaan and where they, they were in the wilderness, Bible says their shoes and their clothes were green with them. He said, what was green, the, uh, the, the clothes and the shoes? He said, the glory of God in their midst. The glory of God in their midst was growing, was growing their shoes, lengthening their shoes and their clothes to so their current si uh, sizes. He said, but do you know that that glory is not only with you? That glory is now in you. He said, so when I touch those clothes and I touch those shoes, he said, I release that glory and I lengthen them. <clears throat> And I've done this several times. You see, somebody, <laughs> I don't know, maybe some people are connecting now. They will be a witness to this thing if they are online. I don't know my size, uh, my shoe size till now. People have been asking me. <laughs> a woman wanted to come from America. Say, Pastor T, what's your shoe size? I said, I don't know. He said, why? I said, I don't know. Why? Because if it's not my size, I can lengthen it. Somebody has bought shoes, brand new shoes. We don't use the same size. He gave them to me. I lent it to my size. I wanted to give that shoe to a friend whose size, let's say, I don't know my size up until now. God bears me witness. I don't know my, my shoe size up until now. I don't know my waist size up until now. So somebody asked me, even last, last month, somebody asked me, Pastor T, What's your jean size, the waist? I said, I don't know. I said, if I want to buy clothes, I will just, I will just buy it and I'll put it on. I said, at times, if, it's, if the shoe size me, I will wear it. If it doesn't size me, I can lengthen it. So, and I don't know my clothes size up until now. <laughs> so, <laughs> hallelujah. So the person wanted to come from America. The person now brought shoes. But he said, I said, but I said, I don't have big, I don't have big uh, feet. Too. I don't, I don't have big feet. So I have small legs. My legs are not that big. So the person now bought two shoes for me. By the time she brought them from the bag, when she came from America, ah, he said, Pastor Tia, this is not your size. I said, watch it. I don't know if the person is even uh, online. I said, watch it. Right there in her, in her, in her presence, I lent him these shoes that she brought from America. To my current size, and I wore it, and I've been wearing the two shoes now. The same thing with the shirt. <laughs> the same thing with the the same thing with the shirt. She bought two shirts as well. 
who are not my size then. Because when I put on the shirt, she, she looked at it, ah, she said, that's why you must know your set size, that this one is too tight on you. I said, watch it. I wore that shirt to activate conference. Normal size. <laughs> so when people ask me, what's your size? I don't know. And I'm not lying. I don't know. You know why I'm not troubled about it? If it's not my size, I can adjust it. If it's bigger than me, I can reduce it. If it's longer than, if it's shorter than me, I can lengthen it. And the shoes that, that new shoes that one of my friends bought, he said, Pastor T, he said, I just bought these shoes. Ah, but we don't use the same size, but I feel I should give them to you. I said, bring them right there in his room. I put my feet inside. It was not my size because we don't use my size. My leg is bigger than his own, even though I have small legs too. But I still, I still senior somebody. <laughs> my leg still senior somebody's leg. So right there in his room, I put my, I put my inside the shoe and I lent it to my size. When I went to Abuja, I have a friend whose leg, Let's say my size is 41. His own will be like 43. I don't know my size, but I'm just saying, let's say my size is 41. His own will be like 43. And he said, T, I like this uh, shoe. I said, you can have them. He said, ah, but you know, we don't wear the same size now. Right there, I learned the thing. He wore that shoes for years. Then the same clothes. Somebody gave me native clothes, one um, native attire like this, very beautiful. Me, I don't like native. I don't like suits. I don't like tie. <laughs> so... Gave me native. And I said, ah, this native is beautiful. He said, hey, but firstly, we don't use, the, we don't wear the same size. I said, I will adjust them to your current size. I adjust the native to his size. Why? You know, all these things. If my dad has said, when I asked him, how come he was able to do those things? If his explanation had been, ah, if you know the price I paid, like all these African apostles, run away from anyone that is taking your consciousness away from supernatural being your nature, the supernatural being something you've achieved. You don't achieve your nature. You were born with it. It's your nature. You don't achieve your nature. So you just manifest it. And people who are training you to act you, to act yourself, your real nature, they are not the one who gave you that nature. They are just opening your awareness, bringing, to your, bringing you to an awakening of who you already are so that you can function perfectly. So if my dad's explanation had been, ah, that was, you know, the price I paid. I fasted for 10 years. I did vision for 30 years. I spoke in tongues for 51 years. Then I, I bit with hot water for 20 years. I I entered the... Uh, I do 4 a.m. prayer for 19 years. And then one day, God now said, my son, you can do all these things. Jesus said, you do it because you have the same life. The works that I, do, I did do also. So when we teach supernatural from the nature... A young guy, a teenage boy, I shared another testimony where a 14 year old girl manifested key in her pocket. The aunt went with her own key. This guy did not go with the spare key to the school. When she came back from school, I think at the last uh, camp meeting, a Dokia camp meeting, we saw, the, we saw the girl because I called the girl out. How many of you remember? I said, that's the girl I'm talking about. And now ask her, how did you do it? And she told us that she just remember what I said. That it's, it's a life, the same life that Jesus had. So she said to us, if Jesus can manifest the key, I can manifest it. You see, when we teach the believers that the supernatural should be the expression of their life, not the reward for their prices, then we will see things. The supernatural should be the expression of your nature, the manifestation of your nature, demonstration of your life, demonstration of, of your realities, not, not the reward or trophy for your sacrifices. Hallelujah. Okay, I remember the teenager. Somebody says you remember the teenager. So the guy was there live and direct. And when we shared the experience, there's many of people reversing food, reversing. So Apostle Clems told me about a family where they reversed they are soured food too. And a girl, I think that they said that one even reversed the stain from the clothes, removed the stain, reversed the clothes back to where it was before it was stained. Why? Why were they able to do those things? Because they came in contact with sons that taught them that supernatural should be the expression of their nature, not the reward for the prices they pay. If you know the price I pay for, you didn't pay any price for the supernatural. 
as a child of God. So if my dad had talked about price, I would have said, oh boy, I cannot do these things because I cannot pay that kind of price. But we say I do this thing because I'm a son of God. And anybody with, anybody with the life of God can do the same thing. Hallelujah. Okay. Let me just stop here. We'll continue in another session that I will be having with us. Thank you so much. They said there should be time for there will be time for question and answer. Thank you so much, Pastor T. It's always Man a pleasure. God, I'm... <laughs> yeah. God bless you, Pastor T. Always a pleasure listening to you. Um, never a dull moment when we listen to you. It's I mean, nice, gentle, but you just hit the notes. Um, I want to believe that people are making notes and through the notes, people are asking questions. You see, Pastor T, yesterday yes, somebody sent me a question and I intentionally ignored the question because I don't think we should be answering such questions. Okay. You know, at this time. Because okay, the person was asking, he said, what is <laughs> he said, what what is what are witches and warlocks operating in? Uh Okay, our power influence. She okay. The person actually gave the answer. He said, "Our power, but influenced by evil spirits." Then he now said, "Why are they stronger than normal Christians?" The truth is, they are stronger. They are stronger in the mind of the Christians that believe they are stronger than them. Exactly. They are not stronger than believers. Yes. A, a, a witch, a witch had caused me, life and direct, stood before me, eh? What you call high level, high, high level witch. That's not like high level. All those <laughs> are just so the witch caused me and fed them paralyzed. I did not utter a word. Yeah. Cost me. Then eat me. She actually like eat me on the chest, like using a charm on me. And with with a cost and fed them paralyzed. I had to pray for her. A wizard had caused me. I was not there. She caused me to fed them, become paralyzed. They took him to a prophet. And the prophet said, you have, <laughs> you have crossed your boundary. I had to pray for him. You see, it, this thing bothers on. The reason they, they think witches and wizards are more powerful than the believers is because their preachers have been busy Telling them about the power of witches and wizards. The day the church will begin to tell the saints of the measurable greatness of the power of God that's working in them. You see, that was the message in the early church. And that was why they could go everywhere, destroy shrine. I, I made a, I made a post 2017 on Facebook. I said, Imagine Peter writing a I said, Can you imagine Peter writing a book overcoming the idols of your father's house? <laughs> Somebody said that book will not sell one copy. Is that is that in fact they will be praying for Apostle Peter that he has gone into error, which is true. But those are the books that sell here. You see, the church has been casting out devils successfully until teachings on demonology invaded the church. Yeah. And I said something that if you used to be in the occult, eh, don't come and share your experiences to the saints. No, yes. because there are greater experiences in Christ than the lies yeah. and deception you witness in the occult. Well, um, but let me just buttress that. <laughs> statement you know yes, when when we're younger in the faith those were the days when when warlocks or witches when they get saved they'll be carrying them from one altar to the other testifying yes, and sir. I remember <laughs> a particular one that was brought to um the church where i was fellowshipping in those days the headquarters as a matter of fact and um she she was talking at and I was getting very uncomfortable, even as a young, very young convert at the time. And um, I was very uncomfortable where I was. Then the next thing, and I said, they should start pleading the blood of Jesus, that she wants to show them. <laughs> she wants to show them how they used to do it. And she went to dress in the full regalia with their pots, um, with their pots on his on her head, then brought the aberaye, you know, that that's what they used to draw blood. When they... And I was just wondering, this is supposed to be, we are supposed to be learning Christ. I mean, as a young convert, you know, I felt we we're supposed to be learning Christ, but here they are, they are teaching us, they are showing us, they no, I've not seen any minister dressing in the full regalia of Jesus Christ, but here they are showing us creating an image of the full regalia of witches. 
So you see, the word picture, they were creating a picture in the minds of the people. Because from my school days, I was involved with drama and I know what dramatic picture. That's why you see that even scriptures, God dramatized scriptures, God dramatized yeah. prophets. Prophetic. It is not the kind yes, of prophecy that we see these days where it's all about words, words, words. I've not, I've hardly seen any prophet that has that has come to clothe himself with the flag of Nigeria to go and lay in an open market for 21 days or 40 days because God instructed him. Everybody is just talking, 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 talking. Why? Because we 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 seem to have lost certain things, certain operations of God. You know, yes, sir. Just what you were talking about, this, which is, uh, you know, um, I actually saw this particular question after the program, but I said I am, I made up my mind that I was going to answer it because um, I just felt we we shouldn't be talking about ask me questions on supernatural. How do I how how do I begin to awaken the consciousness of who I am, which is my true nature? You know, now. Okay, I was, I, I was sharing with them. I was, sharing with them. I was sharing with them on something, an experience I had in my own house here, where yes, sir. It was just a period of my ascensions, and two ladies, two women just appeared in my front. And they were telling me that um, I that I've been hindering them from do, do doing what they were sent to do in this <laughs> estate and all of that. I didn't talk to them. So <laughs> I said, oh, you people came just at the right time. I said, I'm about to ascend. So let's ascend together. And I caught them up in the spirit. As we were going, <laughs> we, got, we got to a height in the spirit. Whatever it was that was occupying them left them because where we were entering, they knew they can't enter. They in. cannot go there. Yes. That they could not enter. Exactly. So when I got there, I handed them over to an angel while I went to do my business in the realms of the spirit. When I finished, I left them there. Four days later, I was buying something in the Malam shop when the two ladies, apparently they are twin, they are twin sisters, they came and knelt down, and they said that they were sent from that place that I took them. Every other person did not know where where I took them. That they were sent. That they asked them to come and meet me, to that I would tell them what to do to receive. They want to learn. You see, your God is we call learner. Exactly. When we manifest, when we manifest Christ. That's right. You see, Somebody was discussing, a minister was discussing with me a few days ago. Yeah. That another minister in this country that I respect so much uh, made, um, called for an impromptu meeting and is telling them about the agenda of the Illuminati to create oh, one world religion, on. one world to dominate. I said, stop listening to those rubbish. I said, because the scripture did not say the creations are waiting for the manifestation of Antichrist. Yeah. He said, they are waiting for us to manifest. They are waiting for sons, not the Antichrist. They are waiting for sons. So, you see, the occultists look so much more powerful than believers in not only in places where believers are hearing about the power of the occult. Exactly. In Pastor exactly. Nation, I taught us, I told us, a 17 or 18 year old girl, a teenage girl, ran inside a shrine in a village. And they have lied to them over the years from generation to generation, that woman should not enter that uh, that shrine. Any woman that enters that shrine, the deity will, will cause the woman to disappear. The lady ran inside, said, I want to disappear. Mm. And nothing happened to her. Why? Because she attended a church where the pastor is busy talking to them about the power of God at work in their lives. Uh, there's mm. a man of God in this country. Before, a demon will manifest in his house. He will just rebuke the thing and let it go like that. But after a while, he took it to another dimension. You manifest in his house as an evil spirit. He would say, oh, yeah, do my laundry. He will turn you to his house. You will fix things in his house. Tire. And by the time you are done, you say, okay, go. I don't need your service again. After a while, they get brain. They get sense. That if if you go, imagine demons now talking to each other. Maybe one demon now say another demon going. Now say, where are you going? I want to go to Pastor Soul. He said, eh? The way we use you today. <laughs> Last time I visited him, I did the laundry. I did the... true life story. Yeah. I said, Demon has stopped. I said, Satan has stopped giving me bad dream. Because you bring what they call nightmare or attack in the dream 
I will interpret my own way. And it's my interpretation that will come to pass. That's right. That's right. So That's right. You, you, you stab me in the dream. I bled to death in the dream. I will wake up and say, dollars come to my hand today. And I will collect dollars. After a while, Satan will say, don't let us waste our resources. <laughs> Let's use them judiciously. You now look for those who, who fear them. You see, outside fear, Satan is a place. Yeah. Now, Continue, man of God. now <laughs> you see, just imagine if believers begin to hear what they are hearing right now across the body, across the whole body. Just imagine. Permit me to just mention some, you know, okay, I won't mention the names, but just imagine <laughs> this is where they are all 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 the concentration, even the prayer is how to do with the enemy. Which is what what do you mean? What do you mean? Let's pray against uh, which is coven. You are the coven of God. You are exactly. Now look at this. My dad, my dad, elder sister, sister shut down all the shrine in our neighborhood. Yeah. Shut my them dad, down. my dad, as the oldest man in our village, did not need to. I mean, during his time as the eldest man, all the they told even the what they call the the witch doctors and all of them. Gave them a choice. You either stop practicing or you move out of the village. And they left. Exactly. So, you see, there is something. When we understand who we are, our identity is what gives voice to our personalities. You see? But, you see, when, but Scripture says that my people, they perish for lack of knowledge. Yes, sir. What is the knowledge? The knowledge of who we are. Yeah. So when we get to know who we are, look at, you see, I'm still saying it, just in my, like those two ladies, right? When they came, I led them to Christ. That thing now is beginning to spark off. They have discussed it in the ESCO because apparently one of them who was married to the husband had actually appeared in the house where I had to stop what she was doing to the husband because the other sister had actually ruined her own husband, destroyed the husband. So they wanted to now come to join forces to kill this one also. But it stopped. So when the man got to know, the man wanted to chase the, the woman. I said, no, this is not, she is saved now. I said, you chase her away now, you go and bring it, a more terrible one into your house. So that has, it, it is now having a ripple effect. You see? The reason I'm sharing is because I have her permission. One of them is actually on the platform. I told her to be on Telegram. I didn't want her to be recognized. That's how we can, that's how we can lead them to Christ. Exactly. When, see, one of them, the, the, the person I'm talking about, the person I'm talking about, sir. The person I'm talking yes, about, sir. one of them is on the Telegram platform right now as we are I talking. She actually gave me the permission to share what I'm sharing right now. If somebody, if somebody is, uh, if there are two philanthropists, one is giving out one thousand naira. Another yeah. one is giving out one thousand dollars. Where do you, the people on the, and the two of them for the, the, there were two lines. The moment they realize that this one is giving out dollars, you see the line of naira will reduce quickly. Mm. So we cannot be talking about the power of the devil. I expect the witches and wizards to come to church. No, exactly. Exactly. Them that what they have is better than your own. But when we begin exactly. to talk about and manifest our own power and reality, yeah. then we drop that thing. That was what happened yes. to Simon in Acts when Bible says when Simon saw greater dimension of power, and you know the sorcerers your cousins they are used to power, he yeah. even offered their money to get the power of God. But now apostles are offering sorcerers money to get uh, nonsense yeah, to, to get, get sorcerers to get sorcerers power. power. To have version of the supernatural. Yeah. So th these are things that we need to be awakened to. These are things that we need to come into because not coming into. Let's use the right word. These are things that we need to become conscious of. Yes, sir. Awakened into. Because we are not coming into it. We are already in it. Right. It, is to, it, is to, it is for that consciousness to be awakened in us that this is who I am. Like Peter you know? said, such as I have. Yes. I we, are not we are not becoming. We are not becoming. We are. We are, we are not becoming. We are. We are not going to be supernatural. 
We are not training to be supernatural. We are not in this school to become supernatural. We are. Yeah, what we, we are, are learning we are just is, reminded of who we are. Exactly. What we are actually learning is the consciousness of who we are. Yes, sir. So, and that is what is this is all about. And I'm so glad that you were able to capture it, even with those testimonies and the experiences, your own experiences, your father's experiences, your auntie's experiences. Thank you for bringing all of them into play. Thank and you I know that been a great we, one. And I know <laughs> that we are, we, we, we are going to get more from this yeah. stream in Jesus' name. All right. So the floor is now open. If you have questions or you have experiences, this is the time to ask questions. We have, okay, we have 31 minutes more to go. So if you okay. have questions, and if there's no if there are no questions, I will ask him to like I said, if if you don't have questions, then he will ask you questions. <laughs> <laughs> because this is a class. So yeah, who wants to go? If you are if you are on Telegram, yes, you can just unmute and you speak. Okay. Tolu, follow can go ahead. We are listening. We are not learning anything. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for this um, teaching. I have a question, and it's about just the practical, just practical application. So, and oh. I'm going to cite a very real example. So, I'm going somewhere. I'm moving to somewhere, and then somebody told me that, oh, that this place is not the safest. Um, it's not safe. It's not a safe neighborhood, and all of that. And I'm just thinking to myself that. That is all the more reason why I need to go there <laughs> because it's not safe. Like they're telling me that, okay, there are criminal activities and things like that. And when I heard that, I told myself that, yes, that that's why I need to go to that place. If I don't go there, how would those crimes stop? So just practical application. What I've been doing um, since um, I heard that, I've just been just saying it, maybe when I remember in my prayer time, I just say that, um, I just make declarations, like send my declarations ahead of that place. And the question I want to ask, so that's one of the things I've been doing because I'm just, I just carry the consciousness, something that I, uh, that's fired, the fire that goes before the Lord that prepares his path, goes before me and prepares my path. And then that's, I just make declarations that God is entering this place and then every other thing has to submit. So and it's not so it's not like I've really been so what I understand from everything that you've said you've been saying is that it's not like I really need to like find a specific schedule and say that okay, maybe 10 minutes every day I want to be speaking about this place because it's not really like maybe before I used to think that okay, I have to set a prayer time to specifically focus on this matter. But I I think what if I'm or if I understand what you're saying correctly. I think what I should do is just the consciousness and just for the practical application. So already I'm making declarations before going to that place. So my plan, I, I, I my plan, well, I don't you know when I get there, like just practically speaking about this financial application, based on what you have said, and I just want to know if this is correct. When I go there, I, I don't necessarily need to um, carry the consciousness that this is a dangerous place because I've been making declarations and I carry the consciousness of who I am and I've entered this place. So I can just go there, like, just go there with that consciousness like that. I don't have to, like, say I'm trying to move around and be, you know, praying everywhere and all of that. So that's my question. I hope, okay. I, hope I was able to communicate uh, clearly. So that okay. <laughs> Thank you, man. The, the thing is this. Who made that place unsafe? Who made it dangerous? Human being. Human being yielding to what? Evil spirits. So if human beings under the influence of evil spirits who make a place deadly, a son of God that is under the influence of the Holy Spirit can, can make it godly. If they can make it ungodly, they can make it godly. So if they can make it um, the den of thieves, <laughs> a child of God can make it a, a peaceful habitation. So this thing still comes back to consciousness. And the reason that evil 
tribes is because sons, with the consciousness of who they are, what they have, have not invaded the place. Because when light invades darkness, they don't struggle. Darkness packs and leaves. And that's why <clears throat> when believers are more conscious of who they are, when they are, when they are more conscious of who they are, they will manifest Christ everywhere they go. Um, there is this, um, this book by Korea who he, he referred to one young campus pastor of Christ Embassy in Delta State University. He said in their day, even police were afraid of the courtists in that school. He said, but the courtists that the police are afraid of, the courtists were afraid of this uh, campus leader, campus fellowship leader, Christ Embassy campus fellowship leader. He mentioned the name of the brother. He said he's looking for his whereabouts. He said, they, he said the occultists were afraid of the guy. Even though the police were, occult, uh, were afraid of the occultists, the occultists were afraid of the guy. And he was getting them, them saved in numbers. And they, he said they have tried to attack him with guns, attack him with cutlass, attack him with all manner. After a while, they started referring and referencing him. I had the, another testimony of a guy that went to university that is known for serious, brutal courtist uh, activities cult activities rather then when he landed he said i cannot be here and darkness will be running the show he said i have come as light and darkness pack and leave and after a while initially the occultists were threatening him but when they saw part using guns and knives because you are still afraid, you, because you know get power, that's why you are using charms and carrying knives and guns. He said, men who really have this real power, they don't carry weapons. <laughs> he said, all they have to do is just speak. He said, oh, one of the causes was trying to harass him. He said, if I open this mouth, your parents will not be able to locate you again. <laughs> and he has demonstrated some things. <laughs> Initially, he said, ah, this is where they use jazz. But after the while, they knew that it's not jazz. <laughs> what he has, you cannot say it's just. And now say, some of the toughest courtists, he will stand up in the class and say, I want to talk to you about Jesus. And he said, the courtists will mount, they will mount guard on the entrance that everybody sit down. They start calling pastor. Everybody sit down. Pastor want to preach. And the courtists will become the gatekeeper. And because the students fear those courtists, they will sit down and listen to the gospel. He said the courtists will mount the they will mount the door and say nobody goes out. Pastor wants to preach. They started carrying his Bible. The, the, the courtists started carrying his Bible. They were huge, taller than him, lanky, terrifying looking, but they started carrying his Bible. And he got some of them saved. And some of them they say, okay, we'll just be praying for. But nobody harassed him again. You know, I always say something that it's not every believer they can harass. We are in this country under military regime. And that military admission dare not arrest Archbishop Vidauza. He said when they said they wanted to play match after he had spent two months preparing for crusade, he now invited T.L. Osborne. They now said, no, we, want to, we have match. Nigeria has match. And Cameroon. He said he told them that that match, you know, that he will send thunder and lightning. He said for three hours they were begging him. Vidauza, we are sorry. Vidauza, we are sorry. <laughs> they gave him another stadium with equipment. And that lightning and thunder, we, they knew the thing would happen. It's not a free child of God they can harass. That's why keep feeding on who you are. I've had testimony of a case where a guy was getting the occultists, uh, the occultists saved on the campus, and the capo and other two boys came to warn him. They were now insulting him. They now said, Neither. He said, Me, neither. It's not like that. needs for darkness. Darkness. He said, Okay, you, they've told us you are stubborn. And one of the boys that followed their court leader brought out a jackknife. To stab the guy and the knife vanish in his hand. The knife disappear. No, no, no. Do you really think they can stab Jesus? As he is, so are we. Let's keep feeding on your realities because anything outside your realities in Christ will cause it to take advantage of you. So back to what you are saying. You are on the right path. Be more conscious of who you are. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you. He said, go everywhere and preach. And lo, I'm with you, even to the end of the year. In the mind of Christ, there is no place that is not safe. Why? Greater is it that is in you. So, feed on your realities. 
instead of you being conscious of those evil arm and evil whatever guys arming you, why don't you be conscious of even the angels that are around you? In the Old Testament, Samuel programmed something in his territory. You are coming to harm Samuel, you fell under power and prophesied. It was Samuel that programmed it. First King 13, a king wanted to harass a prophet after he rebuked him, after he rebuked the prophet for going into idolatry. The prophet, uh, the king strength was his hand, catch him. And Bible said the hand with that. And the king knew that it was the prophet that caused it. My dad had frozen um, wild animals in our presence. Froze the white, froze white animals by the power of God. And we asked him, me and my elder brother, how did you do this thing? He said, every believer can do this thing. That the power of God, if they want to harm you, you can freeze the person. So he now pointed to First King chapter 13, where that man, the prophet, when they wanted to arrest him, the king's hand was frozen. Steve, the king knew because he said, man of God, restore my hand. He didn't say pray to God to restore my hand. In Act, uh, Act chapter 13, when Paul was preaching, an occultist, the Bible says the man was an occultist, a sorcerer. He was trying to prevent the king from hearing the gospel. From hearing the gospel. Paul said he would be blind for a season. And Bible says he immediately became blind for a season. Paul said for a season because he was not there to judge him. He was there to still preach to him and lead him to Christ. So what am I saying? The power of God in you eh, has elevated you above harassment, but you have to be conscious of it. But if you are not conscious of it, you will think that you are in danger. But when you are conscious of it, you will know that they cannot harass you. So, my, uh, my immediate other brother had frozen a snake, a live snake. I was in his house that day. We saw a very big snake walking on the fence because the next compound was bushy. And the people were, not, the people were living there, were, they, they don't care. And they said that place has been invested by snakes. And snakes usually do not visit people's uh, compound. So we now saw, me and my elder brother, we were talking, we were chatting. We now saw a very big snake crawling on the fence, very big and long. I think about five, almost five feet. That's why you just remember my dad pointed one of his finger at the snake. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I freeze. And the snake become frozen until we get the plank. And now use the plan to remove it from the fence and kill it. My dad had frozen. You see these flanniers, men, that were harassing farmers. When my dad was pastoring Baptist Church, he was cultivating a small farm alongside. The flanni only entered our farm once. And that day, they regret. Because as they brought their cow, my dad was warning them, they did not listen. As they invaded our farm with their cows to eat up the crops, my dad froze their cows. They were begging my dad to release the animals. He froze them. Now, remember in the Old Testament, Bible said, Lost Wife became a pillar of salt. Um, what is it? River Jordan, Bible said, River Jordan became frozen so that the children of Israel could pass. This was done by the power of God. And Bible said, the measurable greatness, immeasurable greatness of his power is inside you. And those were just a, a measure of those power, what those power can do. But the, that power in totality is in you. I wish the church would be hearing constantly about the power of God at work in them, the power of God deposited into them, instead of the power of the occultist. Now, we believe that there are some occultists, that the place that they are saying is not safe. They will not tell the occultists that it's not safe. In fact, some believers will now look at the occultists and say, ah, so be somebody like you, no, nobody, you're not shaking you, you can go now. How much more the believers? So, Keep feeding on your realities and let that be your consciousness. When Christ becomes your consciousness, Christ becomes your experience. Thank you. I don't know, maybe I'm, uh, I was able to answer your question. Apostle, yes. Help me out. <laughs> yes, thank you, sir. I just, I, just, I just want to share them something very practical. During our session this afternoon, somebody was sharing, um, you know, some things that were going on in Mozambique. You know, this woman who, whom the Lord told to go to, the, to Mozambique from the U.S. then, and she struggled okay. with it. Why? That she wasn't going to, but the Lord made showed her things and made her go. But the Lord literally gave her his flesh and said, eat this, and you will have the mm. desire to go. And she ate, and so she she went. And today we have over 10,000 orphanages that she has raised, and all of I, them. I did better. Yes. And, and all of them, of course, uh, you will see that they all operate in this. But so somebody who is in the middle is now shared 
um, she's in a place where from that place they actually sponsor they fund Islam into nations. Yeah. But you see, they were debating, they were having a meeting, and there was um, a national this and that. It's only Mozambique. They've not been able to penetrate in Africa. <laughs> yeah, they've not been able to penetrate Mozambique in Africa. That they've done everything. And it's a, it's a what every response they get is that um, some people, they didn't want to mention the people who are talking about believers, have already taken up every territory in that place. Tell me, thank you, man of God. That yeah. was what someone did in the Old Testament. You are coming exactly. to hurt him to follow that power. But yeah. if you are coming for prophetic advice, David mm. advised Samuel to follow that power. Yeah. Even Saul. Yeah. Saul wants to visit somewhere. He said, Is there share, uh, any share of prophet around this place? Mm -hmm. The servant said, Yes, there's one. And when they visited somewhere with good intention, he did not fall under the power. But when he became somewhere's enemy and wanted to kill him, somewhere yeah. program, you will come with TV intention, that thing will be triggered. Yes. So, so can... can do all these things. I thought yes. I thought somebody how to brood over a property. And somebody that wanted to sell it will not sell it. And yeah. he went and brought the witch doctor, and the witch doctor said there is so much fire that there's something hovering over this property. Yeah. The, the spirit of the your spirit covers everywhere. Yeah. Thank so, you, so she was talking about how they now said they will go back. So they said they want <laughs> so they are having a meeting now, planning on how that they need to take Mozambique back. <laughs> As we, said, are not, are not back we are the one that will are, take. Them. You are not we taking are back what take. you never owned. <laughs> we are the one that will take. We are the one so that will take. When them. people say, "Okay, maybe it's time for that nation to be taken," you know, it's time for that nation to mm -hmm. be taken. So we need to understand some of this. How powerful these operations are when we come. Yes. When we begin to walk in the consciousness of our personal, our ordination, you will be amazed yes. how the kind of things what we wield. But you see how we can how we can yeah. preserve our yes. properties. Like you rightly said, the teachings we've heard, the teachings we've heard, when we talk about oh God, I look at some books. I say, and, and human beings read these books. By the time you read <laughs> those books, you just open your heart for demon infestations, demonic infestations. So I believe strongly that yes, um, what you began to do, Tolu. You already quoted the scripture. A fire goes before you to burn up all your enemies round about. Now, the second part of that scripture says that the hills melted like wax in the presence of the Lord, which means, and you are the presence of the Lord because he dwells in you, you dwell in him. So when you come in that consciousness, you have become him, he has become you. So when you step into that place, whatsoever other power remains, they begin to bow. Why? They will recognize. That is why you find that there are places I remember, I will never forget that particular experience, which I experienced first time, several actually, in the days when we we're doing modular evangelism, train evangelism, and all of that. And how um, a young lady preaching because she was wearing trousers in the days of uh, Christ Chapel, and an army officer slapped her. And by the time, <laughs> the, army, by the, time the army officer got, got down from the bus, a train crushed him immediately because you don't touch God's anointed. And fear came. So everybody who witnessed that, nobody needed to preach to them again. Another one, we had two ladies who were going in the days when Oshudi was a very terrible place to walk in at night. And these two ladies were coming back from work. And as they got there, as they were two, two, two guys, I mean, some of these um, hoodlums just surrounded them up and were saying, oh yeah, let me have your bag. You know, that kind of a thing. Give us your bag. You know the air. Yeah. So as they were talking, the ladies were just doing their thing. They were just going. Say, I right, bless his foot. So as one stretched forth his hand to touch this lady, an invisible hand slapped him. <laughs> and he held his hand and started screaming and shouting. That was how they all, you see, you are so defended. If only we will understand this, we are so defended. We are so locked in a very strong, tight defense. That is why when I tell people, when they told me, when I began to hear that, on Lekki Expressway, that when you are driving, that people will come when you are in traffic, that they will come and point, show you gone to one. I started driving. Anytime I'm driving by that road in the night, I'll be driving by the last lane that will make it easy for them to come. 
and I'll be driving very slow intentionally so that they, I will I will even wind down my glass more. I'm alone in the car, but they never came. I don't know why. But you see, that's because they recognize who you are in and by the spirit. Yes, sir. So let's understand that. Okay. God bless you, uh, Tolu. I'm seeing, I saw Busola's hand up because she was the next person that was to come up. Okay. okay. Maybe she's to. All right. Let's take Faith. Faith Olabi, let's hear you. Uh, yes, sir. Um, the question I want to ask is in the, the place of this general terminology when when the when it's referred to as the legality or which um some some of these things some of these other demonic operations happen where there is a breach either by the individual directly or by virtue of where the individual is positioned for example if if the person is within a maybe like a system but because the person is within that system, there are certain authorities that are above that person. That person cannot really do so much, but the person is within the system or in a, in a place of maybe a marital positioning or um, a family. So my, my, my question is in that place of legality where the Bible talks about where the, the, the fence or whatever is broken, the serpent would bite even though you are conscious as an individual of your supernatural positioning, you on your own, you are in order. But whoever you are under is not totally in order and you have to submit to the authority. Does that influence the strength of your capacity to still function the way you should function? Okay. Let me let me address this. I did, I did three past series on authority and submission from God's perspective. You see, the ultimate authority is, the, is, is God, the Almighty God, the Father. That's the ultimate authority. Every other authority figure is subordinate authority. That is to do things according to the Father's prescription. And whenever any authority figure goes contrary to the template of fa the Father, the ultimate authority. Now, the person under him is not to follow him into that error. I will give us an example. In, in Egypt, Pharaoh as the, the king was set in position of authority. But Bible says the thrones of nations belong to Christ. Ephesians 1.16 and Colossians 1.16. It said all things, visible and invisible, the thrones, every seat of government, realm of power. It said they exist because of him. He created them and to serve his purpose. Now, Pharaoh was to serve the purpose of God, but instead he was afflicting the children of Israel. And he now told the midwives to be killing the male child that is born to the Jewish family. That's opposing God, the ultimate authority. But the midwives did not follow him into his foolishness. Bible says the midwife feared God, the ultimate authority. And they disobeyed the instruction of the subordinate authority, and God vindicated them by blessing them. Nebuchadnezzar set up an idol. God said no king should bow to idol. All kings must worship the king of kings, God Almighty. He set up an idol. Daniel, um, Cedric, Mesa, and Abigail said, no, we are not going to bow to your idol. That's not following the authority figure into his error. And God vindicated them when they threw them inside the fire. The fire did not touch them, not even the smoke. Daniel, nobody should call upon the king and upon God. Everybody must come to the king. Daniel said, no. This is against, you are opposing the authority of God. Say, I should not call upon God. Bible said Daniel opened his window and called upon God. And when the authority of God has gone into error, when they moved Daniel and threw him into liars, then God vindicated him. Acts chapter 5, Jesus said, preach the gospel everywhere. When you have few days, let's start from Jerusalem. Acts chapter 4 and 5, the authority because say no, we forbid you from preaching this thing in Jerusalem. Peter said, judge it yourself. Should we obey God or you? And when they put them in prison, God vindicated them by a cause of supernatural jailbreak, not once, not twice. So we see the pattern. So what am I saying? The authority we go in anybody's life should submit to the ultimate authority 
In the Old Testament, God said no Israelites should have an idol. Gideon's father went and imported bar and built shrine for bar. Gideon's father was authority in, figure, in, in, in Gideon's life. But God told Gideon, destroy your father's bar. Destroy the image and the shrine. And raise me an altar in, in his stead. And when he came in the morning, they said, I will put that the Gideon, Gideon father said, okay, you want to fight for your, you want to defend your God. Let's bar persecute him. Let's bar fight him. But nothing happened to Gideon. So what am I saying? Authority vigor, when they go against God, the ultimate authority, it's just like I've been saying it for years, that the day Nigerian government will say, we should not do evangelism on the streets, we should not do this, and we violate those things. Why? Because a king has just rebelled against the ultimate authority. So you, there is something like, okay, you mentioned something like, who we'll break the hedge? You see, let me just correct something. I know some... Uh, for a while now, we have been talking about uh, Satan. Don't give Satan legal grant. A child of God can never give Satan legal grant. Legal uh, Satan is a rebel that has been judged. You see, the authority that Satan wields is illegal. Now, I used to explain it this way: if I go to an institution, courtism is illegal in an institution, but we still have courts in an institution. Now, I can carry my two legs and say, I want to join courts. So if I carry my two legs to join them, I have not given the capo of that court legal grant to deal with me. Because what he is doing is illegal. Now, if I now join courts and I clash with him, and he now beat me or shoots me, injured me, and I carry the bullet wound into the Senate building on the campus, and now said, who shot you? And I said, the capo of social courts. And the police now come to arrest the capo. The capo will not say to the police, you see, he gave me legal grant to do whatever I like in his life the day he came to join my court. Because that court is illegal. So the authority of the capo is an illegal authority, not backed up by the school authority and the government. So the authority that Satan wields is an illegal authority, rebellious authority, not backed up by government of heaven. But if you believe you have given his legal grant, you will take advantage of your ignorance and mm -hmm. do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> a child of God can never give Satan legal grant. Legal grant. That's why Jesus said, resist. He said, cast him out. And all the instruction in the Bible for the believer, he said, resist him, he will flee. That you cannot give him legal grant. But if you believe you can give him legal grant, you will, he will take advantage. Kapo will not say to the judge in the court, oh, I cannot go to jail for shooting him. Why? Because he carried his two legs to come and join my court. So, that gave me legal grant to do whatever I like to him. They will tell him that your court is illegal. Therefore, your authority is legal. I don't know, maybe I, I'm able to answer that question. Now let me let me add to the let me add to the other side, which also I'm sure because she was also talking about maybe in your home and all of that. Now, okay, okay. But when, when it comes to the issue of the husband, your own husband, for example, I'm talking about the husband now as the head of the woman and all of that. I want you to understand this, that even when your husband is not in alignment, you, remember, the word of God says that you, by way of your understanding and alignment, you become a covering for your husband. So exactly. What it means that your own covering, your own alignment with the ultimate authority becomes a covering. What it means that even the hedge that you thought would have been broken can be broken because you are aligned with the ultimate authority. And this is that was, what, we, that was what that was what Sibora did. Yes, Moses was supposed to circumcise Gazon. In fact, I, <laughs> thank God you are saying Moses, it because it was also mentioned yesterday. Moses did not do it. Moses mm. was the priest that's supposed to do that. Yes, and the, the 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 principle and the law of the covenant they had with Jehovah then was if an Israelite male is not circumcised, he cannot enter into the benefit of the covenant. And the yes. angel that watched over that administer the benefit of that covenant, we see that person as a stranger yeah. and cut off the person. And that was what they, was about to happen to Moses' second child. Moses mm -hmm. circumcised the firstborn. And he told Zipporah about the importance of that circumcision, but he didn't do it. Now, Moses was there when the angel wanted to kill the boy. So Zipporah had to play the role that Moses neglected. And because Zipporah was in alignment, so that death was waived. And that was why Deborah was rebuking Moses that you are a husband of blood. You should have done this thing. Exactly. So, we need, God bless you. So, we need to understand all of that 
and the intricacies and, and how it works. Because, you know, with because of this, um, the way we understood the cause of heaven, we actually took it out of context and we began yes, to give the enemy power where he does not have any. We began, have. Give, we began <laughs> to give him all the authority that he does not have. Yes, sir. Because the courts, actually, the courts of heaven was meant to bring believers into the operations, into the consciousness, what we are doing right now. These are, these are yes. courts operations. It was meant to awaken in us the consciousness of what we have been ignorant of. You know, just like we are talking about um, um, uh, uh, plundering, the, 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 the 11 days intercession that we are doing, plundering. What are we plundering? Those things that we have not been conscious of. Exactly. That the enemy have been plundering us, uh, you <laughs> know, riding on our ignorance to plunder us. We are plunder what we, that we are coming into the consciousness. We are plundering the enemy, but we are taking back what was taken from us. Exactly. You know, so that's the consciousness. And I hope for those who are who are engaging in that intercession with this teaching tonight, I hope now you will even pray with deeper understanding and engage that particular realm to take back. You're actually taking back. That's the plundering we are doing. You are not asking. Yes, sir. You are taking back. You are not a asking. Brother, a, brother wanted, a brother wanted to go to Germany. Yeah. He prayed and fasted. They denied him visa. Did everything. Mm -hmm. They denied him visa. One day, he read the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He said, who is this Lord, my father? He said, I'm going back to German members. Let me see any devil that will tell me that me as a child, I don't have mm. right to visit my father's property. Mm. And when he got to the embassy, they asked him what type of visa you want. He said, two years multiple, and he got it. Wow. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Okay. Yes. We take um, Annette also. Go ahead. Sorry, before I do that, um, Faith, Faith Olabi, are you satisfied? Yes, sir. Thank All you, right. sir. God bless you. So, Annette, let's hear you. Good evening, sir. Good, Good evening, evening, Pastor T. Thank Good you evening. for all. Thank you for everything that um, I practically am learning. Um, I have a question regarding because um, I have been, in a way, feeling addressed ever since I started hearing these teachings. Given that, um, I, I. Like, for example, when you mentioned that people are writing those books and giving them titles like overcoming the powers of your father's house and all of that, I feel addressed personally because I actually did write a book which I titled um, Overcoming Ancestral Bondage. But I was coming from the place of personal experience. So in that book, I was writing the experiences of um, the experience that I had, given that um I come from a royal family and I dare to say that I am the first who ever called the name of Christ. And as soon as I did that, I was met with a lot of opposition, but then I did not know what to do, the things I was seeing. What I'm trying to say is that I have been operating in this sonship thing without, without unaware of it, unaware of what I was doing. Right. Because, for instance, uh, when I saw stuff like this, mighty snakes that are coming after me and then my father would tell me you're not going to run away because it's been given to you to be the one to kill that snake. But then you're not yet mature. And some years later, I found myself mature. The thought that I had when I just saw the snake had grown and it had become a really sharp sword so that I could literally kill the snake. So I have those experiences so that even when I moved over here to Germany, my life wasn't easy because I was seeing those things and I knew they came from Africa. I knew even when those demons manifested, I knew that they are coming from Africa and I knew that they are coming from my father's background because I come from that lineage of kings that you know the stuff that they do in Africa, right? So now yeah. uh, my question is, given that I have I have I, I've released this book and it's called Anse <laughs> Overcoming Ancestral Bondage. Now, would you say that I should have titled that book differently? Because I think that, quite frankly, inside the book, it's it's I'm talking about the sonship operation. I just didn't understand it that way. I didn't understand that I was operating in that yet. So do you think that I would have to withdraw it? If it were you, what would you title it? Or how would you have gone about it? Because I'm a little bit unsure how to um yeah continue uh, they, they, 
the thing is this. You see, that title alone, eh? let me just be mm -hmm. sincere with you. That title mm -hmm. alone will not allow you to buy that book. Mm -hmm. same, same, same here, too. Same here, too. And I, I'll tell you the truth. When I see that title, that's okay. Eh. I'll just say, okay. <laughs> Because Honestly, if you were to give me the book, you were to give me the book, yeah. if I were to be in Germany and you were to give me the book, um, because you are close to me, I will tell you. But if you were not close to me, I will accept the book, <laughs> but you can be sure that I will just dump it somewhere. Because I, I, my... I, can't even give, I can't even give it out as a gift. Yes. But, it, it but because I'm close to you, I would have told you, sis, because I love you, this title. <laughs> don't even help me to read it. You see, if you had if you had written something like the manifestation of sons of God yeah. or the operation and dimension of your sonship, then the consciousness of the reader will be you want to show me who I am in Christ. Exactly. But when the title is ancestral power, no, mm. you are taking them back from something that they ran away from. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, as I see. Even yes, if sir. you wanted to talk about ancestral, if you put it something like ancest uh, aligning your ancestral powers in the consciousness of something, which is very long, but yes, something exactly. along that line. That, that is what the Bible says about uh, repairing uh, the, the old yes, waste places. Old waste places, restoring old waste places and repairing... Yes. Re the breaches, the broken down breaches. Let me just let me just say something. You see what you call ancestral power? Oh boy, network. We bind you. Come on, release him now in Jesus' name. Sand did not originate any power from anywhere. Yeah. So most of sorcerers in Africa. If they look at their scroll, by ordination, most of them were supposed to be apostles. They were supposed to be apostles, but they did not align with their ordination. So they manifest some traits in the negative. So what sons do is to repair those things yeah. and claim desolate heritage. Desolate heritage. You see, what, what they did not enter into, you now move your family into it as a son. Not you trying to be delivered from <laughs> them. No, you moving your lineage. And I'll say, okay, I move my family into this thing that is yeah. theirs in God, but Satan perverted it or blind their eyes to it or try to steal it. Now, That's just it. Now, to yes, answer sir. your question, Annette, um, is, is it a physical publication? Yes, sir. It is. Oh, wow. It is. Okay, this is what you will do. You are going to have a revised edition. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You will do a revised edition and retitle it. Exactly. Because, okay. because of the people, I mean, from what you said, that the things, the content has to do with sonship. So you need, because people like us, the Lord will just go ask us to go to the bookshop and read the back cover of a book. Once we read the back cover, we already know everything. We have the content. Exactly. So, so if I don't get into it, I may never know if it is based <laughs> on what you wrote as a title. So you are going to exactly. do a revised edition so that sons can assess that book. Exactly. And they will learn how to align their bloodline in righteousness. Exactly. Yeah. So you see what sons are to do is to correct the errors of generation. Exactly. But those things, if it, now that you say it's sonship you're talking about, then like he said, you have to retire to it and let it be that the emphasis is sons. Yeah. Just like when Paul said, be not drunk with wine as in necessary, but be filled with the spirit. So Paul was not talking about drinking. Thinking, call, no, he's talking about there's a better wine in Zion. But the church, like, the church did not see what he was talking about. They major on don't drink beer. 
Paul was not saying, he's talking about greater one that you see the effect that beer produced that people lose their mind and they behave anyhow. He said, when you drink the spirit, you will get intoxicated. I, I made the post 17. I said, in the world, when they get drunk, they misbehave. In Zion, when we get drunk, we behave. Thank you, sir. <laughs> God bless you. I appreciate you, um, Pastor T. Um, uh, so let's, I don't know you, sir. And let's work on that because I believe that book carries a message for generations. So we need to work on it so that it will gain access. People who need to read the book will gain access to it. Because the truth is this. We've read enough books that, <laughs> that, that taught us, that awakened us to the lies of the enemy. We need books mm -hmm. now that will bring us into alignment and the consciousness that will awaken and bring us into, into full or the full operation of our conscious, conscious identity in Christ. Yes, so sir. that is, and through the, the, the title is a door. That is why we are mm -hmm. emphasizing this. The title is a door that will give them access into the house, which is a, the content of the book. God bless you. I hope that Thank helps. You, sir. Yes, yeah. it did. Thank you very much, sir. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pastor T. Yeah. So we'll take, we'll take the last one. Faith. To my T. I like the sound of this name. To my T. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, good evening, Pastor Taiwo. I am always so blessed every time I listen to you. Uh, my question is, if um can you hear me yes we can i can hear you yeah if because there's something i really want to understand if a two-year-old child or let's say a five-year-old child walks up to you and say pastor taiwo can you explain to me what exactly it means and how i can practically apply it to my life what it means to be conscious of this lifestyle okay. we're talking about, what it okay. means to feed on our identity. I just wanted to, you know, if, you, if you're going to teach a five-year-old child, how are you going to explain it? Okay. You understand? Because I really want to, I think I understand, but I want to be sure I understand okay. this thing. The thing is this, you know, when Jesus said, unless you are converted in your mind and become like little children. That, that was why I did um two part series on engaging the word. Part one, things to observe when you are studying the scripture. Part two, how to move from letter to experiences. Because scriptures are supposed to be doors, doorways. Scriptures are supposed to lead you into experiences, lead you into the person of Christ. You just say you start the scripture thinking that in them you have life, but you will not come to me. You don't know that they are testifying of me, pointing me, pointing you to me. Now, how do children, you know, they don't, they hardly initiate adults into witchcraft. Mm. Mm. They initiate children. Why? Because the devil knows this thing. That it's easy to... It's easy for children to move into these things than adults. And how do they... I, I, what makes it easy for children, like, according to your question, is children think in pictures. They talk in pictures. Adults deal with letters. And that makes a lot of difference. That's why if you go to a shrine, you will see painting on the wall. You will see pictures. Why pictures? You when you are looking at pictures, your soul is open, and these things flow through your soul. So when you begin to imagine, that's that's what we are talking about consciousness. Consciousness simply means that I retain the thoughts of the fact that this is who I am, and that's why little children enter into this thing quick. Because when I'm talking to you as, a, as an adult, it's later that you will be seen. But when I'm talking to a little baby, he's seen pictures. So if I talk to you about ministry of angels, you, you will be see, anytime I mention angel, you will see A-N-G-G-E-L-S, angel letters. But a child will conjure an image of an angel in his mind. So easy for the child to enter into the team. 
That's why a little baby, as a mother, you understand this, especially if you if you are, if you come from uh, Nigeria, a little child. There's nothing called. There's no entity called Ojuju Kalaba. There is no entity like that. It does not exist. But when a child is going towards darkness, because children they don't know darkness, they don't fear darkness. It's adult that all the fears that children exhibit, adults communicate those fears to them. So now, when a child is going towards a dark place, and you don't want him to go so that he will not fall and enjoy himself, you now say, "Hey, come back!" You are saying, "Come back!" The child is still going. The moment you say, "Ojuju Kalaba is there," the child will freeze. Now, to you, you just mention O J U J U or Juju letters. But the child, the child was not seeing letters. The child has conjured an image of what Ojuju Kalaba looks like. And he will use the way you say it to conjure. Oh, that Ojuju Kalaba must be a terrible thing. Only God knows what some children actually conjured up in their mind that made them freeze. You see how, the, how their imagination caused them to enter into experience now. They, there is nothing like Ojuju Kalaba, but they enter into the experience by freezing and turning back. Because to them, Ojuju Kalaba is real. But you, there is nothing like Ojuju Kalaba, but to them, it is real. So the same thing is, when you talk about the supernatural, you have to use your imagination. I went to Bumas the last, it was the last two weeks, and I said, let me show you how easy it is to heal, to heal the sick. I said, who has pain? Somebody said he has pain. Where is the pain? He says, and I put my hand in his waist, where he said there is pain. And I wipe the, I wipe my waist as if I remove something. And I said, check it. And he said, the pain is gone. And then I said, how? I said, Jesus said, if you look closely after a woman, as a man, you have committed it already. And before Jesus healed every sick person, he has already healed them in his imagination. That's why we look at a withered hand that says, stretch for your hand. If that hand had not been stretched in his imagination, it, what he would have been seen in the physical would be impossibility. But he will say to the man that had been lying for 30 days. So if I want to explain to little children, when I talk, they enter into pictures. So, and children, they don't know limitation. So if I now say this is cultural, I will now say this is what, okay, let me give you an example. I have a, a nephew. Then I think I've forgotten his real age. Between six and eight years old, I was not sure. I'm not sure of his age then. And I've shared this thing. He, he was playing with his mom's phone. And he entered a site on, uh, on Google. He now saw a site where they said, if you want to become a magician and you want to become a wizard or whatever, enter this uh, out of curiosity. You know, children are curious by nature. He entered the site. And they now started introducing some things. They now say, if you want to, if you want the spirit to appear to you and teach you magic or some things, they say, repeat this word several times. And this guy has a very um, serious, how do I put it, like genius brain that can just capture things. And I just look at the letters, the letter register into his soul. I was in the guest room, I was in their house. He tried to get it in out, he couldn't. He now came to me. So when he came to me, he said, Uncle, he said, I want to, he now told me everything. I, I saw this site, but when I enter, I saw that it's not good. It's, uh, those things, is dark, it's demonic. Maybe between six and eight years old. Now say uncle, but the letter, the word that they say, somebody should repeat so that spirit can be visiting him and be teaching him magic. He said the, the word is still in my mind now. I don't want to repeat that word. I don't want to be thinking about that. He said, Uncle, just lay your hands on me and remove the word. I've never thought about the possibility of that thing. He said, just lay your hand on me. I want you to lay your hand on me and just clear the word from my mind. Just remove it. Ah, uh, I was like, clear the word from your mind. Because me, what you know, adults will say. The moment it becomes your memory, it is permanent. But a child said it can be wiped. And we, we have known even in technology what they call memory format. So we can format negative memory too, supernaturally. So, and the only thing I do is I go ahead and do it. When I lay my hands on the set, those letters appear in my own soul, in my own mind. I saw the letter. They were running very fast. And I just remove, as I wipe his head like this, the letter cleared from my mind, and I knew it is gone from his own mind too. So I now said, what are those letters? He said, oh, what letter are you talking about? I said, those letters that you say you, you don't want to be remembered, but those words. He said, which word? I said, the side that you say, he said, which side? He couldn't remember anything again. And you know, children don't pretend. It was someone who came crying to me by himself, shaking. But now he's arguing which letter, which word, which website. 
I collected the mother's phone from his hand to look for the website so that I can show him that this website now. When I collected the phone, the website wiped off. So it was the mother's uh, uh, um, Christian site that the mother visited that I remain. That site wiped off with the thing. So children, when you talk about this thing, they see in picture. So um, that picture has already made it their consciousness. Prophet Fanny said he was, she was teaching on Ministry of Angels. And I 13 year old daughter started seeing angels. On their way back home, now say, Mommy, have you seen your angel before? The woman said no. And it was the woman that taught that every believer has angel. And the daughter started seeing. Because Prophet Fanny was seeing letters, the daughter was seeing image. So that's why in the occult, they deal with images. Because image open your soul up to the reality in the spirit realm. Pictures. So that's why when you read the scripture, when you hear things about your sonship, when you hear the river of life, don't see the word R-I-V. See the river flowing. Out of his belly shall flow rivers. That's why uh, doctor, some, uh, sometimes Dr. Fai will say, picture. He will say, picture, the river of life flowing from you. And people have something like that. So that's what consciousness is all about. When the reality of your sonship have now become image in your mind that you carry, you carry about. Thank you. I don't know, maybe... I'm able okay. to uh, let me let me just add to that. Um thank you, sir. I'm I'm sure maybe the, maybe it's this school that she's joining on this platform for the first time, but had even you've been following us, you would have understood what you would have appreciated what um Pastor T was saying when he talked about the imagination. Now, like he said, children they see in pictures, and we must learn to see in pictures. That is why exactly. you see that Second Corinthians chapter ten from from verse four began to tell us the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty through God to so the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imaginations. You see what the enemy does is that he sends imaginations. Now the imaginations that the enemy produces in our hearts are the things that place argument against our ability to know God the way we should know God. But for the yes, children. Sir. What gives them access into that knowledge is their, the purity of their heart, their innocence. Yes, sir. That innocence is a virtue. That is why Jesus was saying in Matthew 5, 9, that blessed are yes, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. He said, who shall ascend unto the holy hills of the Lord? He that has pure, clean hands, pure hearts. So you see that purity is what gives you access into that trend because what adults do because of the things we have learned in the, the thoughts, the experiences and all of that. So when we are saying these things, we begin to, uh, let me give you an example. <laughs> I was, somebody gave me a shirt in Abuja and okay. the, sleeves, the sleeves were here. And I lo I just love that shirt. I actually wore it to the School of Mysteries in in where, you know, the shirt was here, the sleeve was here. Ah. I say, oh Lord, I love this shirt. And the last then do something <laughs> about it. I just had to do something about it. So I said, okay. So I just shook the hand like this. Just I just shook the hand. And before you knew it, it was almost going longer than I said, ah, no, no, no. It I, I want it perfectly fit. And right now that shirt fits perfectly. This shirt is actually an undersized shirt. This is an undersized shirt. But you see, I discovered that if I love the shirt, I wear it and it just fits. You can, you can, you can adjust it. Yes, it fits perfectly. Now, what brought me there is the purity. The, the, belief, that, the belief system is pure. That, look, because God said it, I believe it. And, but you see, now, I was, okay, what brought me there was that I was sharing this experience of shirts renewal of shirt and all of that. Somebody said, why do I need to, we, we change the shirt now. I said, uh -huh. oh, do you now see? we we'll change it. Which means, because you can change it, you don't need, we don't, you don't need, for you, you see um, the supernatural being done on that as a waste. Exactly. So what that does to you, what that does to the mind is that, like Jacob, you begin to ask God to clothe you and to feed you. Meanwhile, you, have the power to produce those things. Mm -hmm. Now, so when you understand that, so everything comes boils down to one thing, to our ability to imagine the sanctified imagination and purity. Yes, yes sir. Now, well, last week, Saturday, we talked, we took um, prophetic ascensions, and I was telling them, look, what will hinder you from ascending 
is purity. And I'll tell you how it works. You'll find that you can even ascend. You are in God's presence and you'll be arguing with God. God is showing you something. You'll be arguing with him that, ah, I, this, this is not possible. This can't be real. Because <laughs> why? our consciousness, our adult consciousness have been so locked to this realm. So we now, exactly. call, we now call the things we can touch, the things we can see as our reality, as against yes. where we dwell in the heavenly places. Yes, sir. So if you are now what we are doing through this school is that we are awakening our consciousness of where we are seated with and in Christ. That's where we are. So if you so what that means is that you begin to knock off, you begin to uproot those things that will naturally argue with what you have been shown in that realm. Yes, sir. That's why you see that children is so easy for them to ask because they don't have anything in mind. Mm -hmm. And that is also why you see that. Um, like he right, rightly said, that's why you see that they are so easily initiated into anything that has to do with supernatural. Why? Because they are because of the innocence of their heart, they are intrigued by those operations. That's why you see that they are now using cartoon to introduce them to the false supernatural. Uh -huh. Because of the purity, the pure state of their heart, they use that. So if we as so talking about explain this thing to a five year old child, I hope this helps. Because if you bring yourself into that childlikeness, you will see that it will be easy for you to understand, to yes. appreciate, to enter, and to operate what we are talking about. God bless you, Tommy. I, I'm in faith. I hope this helps. Yeah. Okay. I see two more hands. Please, no, after this, no more, because I promise that we'll be doing strictly two hours. We're we already 25 hours. We shot above the time <laughs> by 25 minutes. So we'll take blessing Oluwaga and Busola and after Busola no more so blessing go ahead yes sir good morning sir good morning good, good morning. bless you yeah yes sir. um yesterday I actually had a question on mortality what about mortality and I asked the question was um even that um supposedly yesterday the morning I had this thought when I woke up I was thinking about Jesus Christ himself so I thought about his, his resurrection. When he resurrected, he resurrected with the piercing in his hands, the marks in his hands. So it means he resurrected with his with his body before his death. And when he ascended, he ascended into heavens. And heavens is actually, we know heavens is actually uh, in the spirit realm of death. So I want to understand Immortality itself, you actually mentioned immortality is possible, but like it's very it's much possible. So it means a man can live on earth and when he when he wants to go down to heaven, he can just decide to just move down to heaven and switch back to earth. Like I don't know, that place I'm I'm being stopped. I'm being stopped about because I listened to one of the renowned prophets. You know was teaching on immortality. I, I've known about I've come to the point whereby okay, a man can decide when he wants to live the earth. You want to live the earth around one or twenty, around hundred. <laughs> that has long life itself. But I've left that path where I can understand there's long life for a Christian, for a believer. And as much as there's long life, there should be mortality. But embracing the fact itself, like how possible, like what's what's what can one do for this stuff? Like the experience itself, like, like what are the process? I'm kind I'm kind of curious about the processes. Processes. I actually had these thoughts or the inspiration that came this morning. That Jesus Christ did his thing. He died. He resurrected with the same body. He had the same marks. Okay, blessing. And See, he left no, the no, no, no need of going too far. No need of going too far. Okay. Um, okay, sir. I could actually ask anybody on this platform to give you an answer, but I'm going to ask um, Pastor T to just give you an answer then. I already know that's why no need of going too far. We teach immortality yeah. here. Okay? We teach immortality because immortality is our design. Immortality yeah. is our birthright. Immortality is who we are. All right? So I'll just allow Dr. T to just share. So the, the, the thing is this. You see, the, the problem with... um The problem is in the soul, in the mind, the level of understanding. Because if we think there's a separation between us and the God edge, and if we think immortality is what we are entering into into the future, so because mm. that's the condition of our soul, that's what will be our experience. Mm. 
But if we believe that immortality is now, you know, when I, I did a I did a series on um is it preaching cre- preaching the gospel to every creature that not only the, to human being. That is why I said go and preach the gospel to all creatures, not go and preach the gospel only to human. And that's mm-hmm. why we say the creation is waiting for us. Yeah. So that we can bring them into the glorious liberty of the sons. Now, yeah. I now say something that if we believe that what Adam did affected spirit, soul, and body instantly, but what Jesus did only affected spirit, then Jesus did not do finished work. Yeah. He did one over three. But you see, Satan thrives in lies. But the consciousness of the church. Over the ages, is what Jesus did affected your spirit. It does not affect your soul. It does not affect your body. So your soul will come into it. Your body will come into it. No. You see, the secret is believing that the spirit, soul, and body has entered into it. Let that be your consciousness. Spirit, soul, and body has entered. Uh, have entered the three of them. And that was what Paul understood when he said, through the gospel, Christ has brought back life and immortality. And that was why he could say, when it comes to death, I decide whether to die or not. Philippians 1, 20 to 21, he said, I don't know which one to choose, whether to die and go or to stay. Meaning that he decides, he decided. And I, I shared the experience of my dad. Can I go ahead, sir? Yes, please go ahead. I shared an experience with my dad. My dad, had, he, he's not the type that was known to be very sickly. All my life, I think I could, I can say I only saw him like where you say somebody is sick twice all my entire life. And that sickness did not last up to 20 minutes. There was a particular one that we thought he was going to die. He was so sickly and so weak. So he, he managed to enter into his room. I was so afraid. I entered the room with him to go and look at him. He chased me out to the living room. He chased me back from the room to the living room. He said I should leave him. That is not going to die. Nothing will happen to him. That I should just give him like 15 minutes. And after about 15 minutes, he came out from his room, glowing from head to toe. Even his clothes were shining. And the gray hair on his head turned to black. And he looked like 20 years younger than his age. And I asked him, I said, what happened? He said, you see, Moses beheld glory on Mount Sinai from outside. And when Moses entered into that glory atmosphere, he said, Moses entered into an atmosphere. And that suspended aging process in Moses' body. He said his eyes, everything, his eye was not dim, that the thing stopped aging process, that God had to tell Moses, go and die. <laughs> he said, and Moses beheld it from the outside. That glory was not inside him. He said, but in Christ, the glory that he beheld a, fa- a fraction of, he said, you have become one with the glory. The glory is inside you. And that glory is you, you must learn how to superimpose it. Just let it affect your spiritual and body. He says, so what he did was he lied down on his bed because he taught me what he did. He lied down on the bed and meditated. You see meditation now. Using his imagination, meditating on the glory that Moses beheld from outside and suspended aging process. Now, if that glory is now inside me, so I don't have to age. And that was why, because that glory was his consciousness, in that place of meditation, he came out with the effect on his body. That was why the gray hair was a sign of aging, return to black, because he just beheld immortality. He just, he just fellowship with the life that he is. So he just feed on the truth of his identity. So it, the moment life and immortality becomes his consciousness, it becomes his experience in his body. So um, what now happened was a time now came. My mom told me he packed all the pictures of his old friends. He now discovered that he's the, he's the only one remaining. All of them have gone. He now told my mom that he wanted to go. He, he's talking about death now. That I wanted to go. My mom now called me. Come and talk to your da- uh, your father. He's talking about dying as if he's traveling to Lagos. <laughs> 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 he now said he's becoming boring. That he didn't see anybody that they will be discussing these things together again. That is becoming that how can he be the only one? That I want to go and join them and they will be gisting over there. Talking about that. And when he now allowed that to be his consciousness, he went to a mountain and they said he slept. When he slept, he could not walk. Not that he became paralyzed, but he could not move his two legs. The waist were, I think, like a kind of misalignment. 
on his waist. They brought him in an ambulance. That's the first time I heard something like that. They brought him in an ambulance. My mom called me. When I went home, my dad was immobilized. I now said, you know what to do. He said, he's not going to do it. I wanted to go. <laughs> I said, okay, let me lay hands on you. He said, he wanted to go. It's like, yeah. Has made up his mind. You know, Paul got to a place that I told Timothy, come and see me quickly because I, I will soon depart. He made that choice. So when my dad now said that, this thing was now getting worse. My mom will carry him to the bedroom, carry him. So one day I got angry. I now said, No, this thing you are you are putting so much pressure on my mom. On my, so if, do you really want to go? Because I knew that he knew what to do. He just like he didn't want to do it. <laughs> So I now said, do you want to go? One, one day I visited him and I said, do you want to go? He said, yes. I said, when do you want to go? I said, if you want to go, go. He said, okay, I want to go. So because I told my mom, I said, let me go and talk to my dad. I, I told my mom in our own room. I said, let me go and talk to my dad. And now when I now enter my dad's room, we are talking about that. So I see we are having family meeting. And I said, dad, you see the stress you are putting mommy to now? True. I said, do you really want to go? Because I knew he knew what to do. He knew what to do. I said, do you really want to go? He said, yes. Then I was going for a meeting in Abuja. I was going for a wedding in Abuja that week. So I came from Lagos. I branched at our hometown. And I told my mom, I said, let me go and meet that. Let's settle this thing once and for all. So I now enter his room. I said, daddy, do you really want to go? You have made up your mind. He said, yes. You have made up your mind. Yes. I said, okay, when do you want to go? I said, because this body is becoming too much for mommy. So, so that you can relieve off the body, since you have made up your mind not to get <laughs> So, and that's when you want to go. He said next Friday. I said, around what time? He said between 5 and 7. That it will not be 7.01. So, that he prefer evening. So, I now said, you have concluded to go next Friday between 5 and 7. He said, yes, that it cannot be 7.01. <laughs> So I now say, okay, he said, he said, he now said, mm, it will be around to seven. When he said around to seven, I now say, okay, let me go and tell my mom. So I now told my mom, I said, dad has finally made up his mind. You know, even though he was saying he wanted to go, he has not booked the flight. You see, when it comes to death, believers decide. <laughs> so, but that day he booked his flight. <laughs> So he said, next Friday. And I told my mom, I said, dad has made up his mind to go next Friday. My mom said, it's better, let him go self. Because ah, uh -uh, this wala is getting too much for her. And that was why when he eventually left, it didn't weigh so much on my mom's emotion. Because it's like she knew I heard that he was going. So he now says he's going next Friday, around to seven. So I now say, okay, I'm going for a wedding in Abuja. Should I come on my way to Lagos? Should I branch to see you again? He said, no. That I've just seen him for the last time in the flesh. That will be meeting again somewhere else. <laughs> so he said, I should not bother myself. I said, ah, you don't want me to see you. That means this is the last time I'm going to see you in the flesh. He said, yes. So, and that's how I hugged him. I, so I first saw him about, I said, well, he has made up his mind to go. When I got to that wedding, Abuja, I told my friends and some guys, I said, my dad is going next Friday. My dad is going next Friday. He said, how can you be sure? <laughs> I said he has booked his flight and he's going around to seven in the evening. So when I came to Lagos, I told my friend the same thing. They said, How can you ask? So one of my friends said, That one was my childhood friend. It's my childhood friend. So the one in Lagos said, ah, How can you be sure? I said, Dad has booked. But that my childhood friend said, If that said he's going around to seven, we'll go. Because that one grew up, we grew up together. He knew, he knew who that my dad was. So when that Friday came, even me, I've forgotten about it. But one of my friends in Lagos that I never discussed anything with, somehow it escaped my mind. I didn't tell him. He, he didn't even know that my dad was strong. So we were just talking. I was in his house. And all of a sudden, he looked at me. He said, he used to call me apostle. He said, apostle, I just saw a vision now. And it's very prophetic. I just saw a vision now. I said, what happened? He said, I saw a man's spirit coming out of his body. And I knew he's a man of God, an elderly man. And I saw two angels wearing army uniform like camouflage, and they were saluting the man. So they were saluting the man. He now said in that vision, I knew by the spirit that is for your dad, that that man is your dad. And he has never seen the picture of my dad. He didn't know that my dad was good. And that was that Friday. When he now said that, and now look at the time, it was to seven. As I was just thinking, that's how my mom called. Taiwo, I said, my dad is gone. He said, how do you know? I said, have you forgotten? Uh, he said, he's going to there and he's going around to seven. 
You see, life and immortality has been brought back through the gospel. That's what Paul said. So life and immortality should be your consciousness now, not something you want to enter into. Like we started at the beginning, we stated at the beginning that we are already being, we are not becoming, but we are just being reminded and coming into awareness. Thank you, sir. Apostle, you can just help me finish it. All right. God bless you. Um, I think you 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 already said it. I just want to I just want you to put, to open it up a little. Um, but the truth is, like you said, immortality is our consciousness. Immortality is who we are, and we have biblical. You see, you are talking about Jesus. Look at Enoch. Enoch before the advent of Christ went. He broke all protocols. He broke all protocols. It's like he went out of time to connect with the with the finished work of Jesus before the world began. He entered into that realm and he operated from there and entered immortality from there. That is how real immortality is. So he said he was not. Why? God took him because he walked with God. So you also see Eli Elijah. These are people who literally they were they were they were translated they went in with their body because what one of the questions we're asking is does it mean we can enter because you were that's why i said you don't need to go too far because you were trying to use jesus as if you are as if to convince us that if jesus could enter the heavens with his in his bodily form which means we can oh yes enoch so that's why i'm bringing enoch i'm bringing elijah before the advent of Christ in the flesh, they entered in their bodily form. You have access to go in there. Now, you are thinking that you are going to enter. You're already there, and I'll tell you why. Jesus, when he entered, you entered. You entered with him. Yes. He said, you have come to Zion. Him. So you are already there. This is one of the greatest errors that religion taught us and limited our ability to operate in this realm is that they were telling us that it's after we die that we will now start our journey into heaven. It is not true. It's a life from the pit of hell. It's an error. He said God is the way. He said he is the way. He's yes. The That's and right. we have entered through him. Yeah. So what, what is, look, where are you seated? Look at what Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. He said, none had ascended into heaven. He said, the one that came from above he said he came from above. Who is above? He is. He came from heaven. He came from the Father, and he's in. He's with the Father. So that <laughs> began to tell you that was even before he went. That was before he went to the cross. He said he was on earth and he was in the heaven. What was he doing? He was showing you. He was showing you and me how how our consciousness should operate. That though we are here, we are also in the heaven. That means what it means that you have access. That is why when we talk about ascent. You just leave this realm, you enter into that realm, you see what is happening there, you come and this. You see, that's how you are supposed to be working. So Enoch so perfected it. Then they now decided that, oh, look, you know what? Just remain here. <laughs> so you can also perfect it when you walk, when you awaken that consciousness in yourself, such that I am in heaven, I'm here. I'm in heaven, I'm here. I'm in heaven, I'm here. I'm in heaven, I'm here. So when you begin to say that it Bonds, it bonds, it bonds in your inside. And when it bonds in your inside, you are established in it. That's when you begin to gain access into in, in, in and out of that realm. One of the things we are going to learn as we move on is how Adam operated before the fall. You know, how Adam operated before the fall. Because when we talk about the cosmic realms, the heavens and the earth, there were no demarcation. That's why you see that God. When you hear that God came to fellowship with Adam in the cool of the day, so you are looking at as if God took some staircase to come down from heaven. <laughs> it, there is nothing like coming down because every time God always goes, children of God, we go up always. There is nothing like coming down. So you would think that he came down to meet Adam. No, the thing is there was a realm where they were meeting and we also meet in that realm. God bless you. I hope that helps um blessing. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank All you, right. Sir. Okay, we'll take the last one, Busola. That's the last mm -hmm. for the night for the night. <laughs> so please, I sent you a message. Some people had sent three people had sent some questions at the beginning of the okay, so we'll I sent take, we'll take we'll take those questions tomorrow. Let's hear 
Okay, I will, um, after this meeting, I'm going to copy out the questions, then we'll take them tomorrow because time okay. is really gone. People like yes, I consider people who go to work, I have to be very fair to them. All right, Busola, let's have you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, evening. just a very quick one, sir. Um, I it's it's the teaching tonight about the full equipping that we get at once we come into Christ, once we once we are aligned, and the perspective of the grace teachings. So, um, an example is where um. The Bible says that when Christ ascended, he gave gifts <coughs> unto men. And um, the understanding is that um, one does not come into a full equipping and there's maturity and there are certain graces that are accorded to some people, you know. So I just wanted, so if you can bring more perspective, how we can, the perspective of the grace teachings to the... For, for for what you said tonight, sir. Grace teaching, explain explain better. Sorry, I didn't grasp it. There's some people that there's something you will not come into unless you partake of the grace of, upon somebody or what? Uh, that that's there's that's one, sir. That element of it, and then there's also that within the body of Christ, there are certain gifts that Christ has given. So, according to, um certain yeah people so like you don't there's no fullness because there are things that you grow into by okay, process okay. or by partition like that it's, it's those kind of things i was just going through my head to <laughs> say yeah <laughs> okay but, but see, let me let me help put the question in perspective i'm trying to remove ah. all the religion in my head yes okay. it's very important it's very very important i agree with you <laughs> you see now look at when look at the scripture actually Ephesians chapter four from verse eleven said um, he gave some to be prophets some to be apostles I mean apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers for the edifying what is edifying mm -hmm. that is what we are doing right now another word mm -hmm. for edifying is for the awakening exactly for the awakening of the body of believers of people until we until we now come into the full consciousness that thing called the stature of the measure or the fullness of the sun is actually coming into the consciousness of who we are it is not because we are god is releasing it small small giving it small, small. when he gave he said he ascended and he gave gifts he gave he's not giving he is not giving. He gave. So we are, the thing is, we are being awakened into the consciousness of what he gave. And that is what all of those, what we call, what we now call the fivefold ministry, that is what they were meant to do, to awaken our consciousness. It's, unfortunately, we made them into titles, exalted them as if, oh, when we are here, then the rest, they should come. Because we are the one who we make, give them. It's as if we are the one giving them the stature to become. Yeah. You already have the stature. My responsibility is to awaken you, to, yeah. to, to poke you. That's the word. To poke you. It's like, hey, come on, don't you know who this who you are? That's actually exactly. what, that word a define. Come on, wake up. That is who you wake to your consciousness. Wake up to the consciousness of your of your identity. That is what we are supposed to be doing. That is what exactly. every teacher is supposed to be doing. That is what every apostle should be doing. That's what every prophet should be doing. Every evangelist should be doing that. Awaken people to the consciousness of their being. Yes. Over to you. Yes, sir. You see, you, you just answered it. Just like how my dad trained me. Exactly. You see, he will do something. He will do something. We now say, Taiwo, I did it because I'm a son of God, and mm. any son of God can do it. So, what yeah. is he doing? If you become son, have the same life, you can do the same thing. Yeah. And that's what the that's what the Ephesians for is saying. Because you're you see, you are not growing really into that stature, but you are coming to awareness of the stature that you have already attained in Christ through Christ. 
So, yeah. and when they are, that's why <clears throat> what we are doing is remember, uh, trying to get you to remember who you have always been. So that you not forget who you are, like James said, that when you behold yourself in the mirror and you forget who you are, that you live as if you are not that person. He said, but don't be forgetful here. Who just goes and forgets? So what we do here is keep reminding you that this is who you are so that you will not forget who you are. So there is nobody that is carrying one grace and is depositing it to you that you don't have that grace. No. Bible say of his fullness God is a grace upon grace. Yes. All things are yours. You have become one with him. <laughs> so that's just it. Thank God you say you are on learning now. Actually, what, what most believers are doing in our days is they are on learning. Yes. So learn to learn. The yeah. one, the first half to learn so that they can now learn. Thank you, sir. God bless you. So, so Thank I you, hope, sir. I hope that helps. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. God bless you. So yes, we sir. come to the end of day two of um, yes, the school of the supernatural. God bless you, um, Apostle T. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Nice thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So thank yes. you so much for this particular time. I love, now, I love our audience so much, sir. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank God. Now, I just want to declare again, Ovala, that as you go, you will walk in the reality of who you are, even tonight, Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whether you want Amen. to speak or you want to engage what we've heard what we've learned tonight or you want to meditate in engagement or you want to pray into it you want to press into it however i am now speaking in agreement with pastor taiwo we are now speaking into your realm into your life that the the realms are open for you to gain access we declare the portals Amen. open you will gain you will Amen. walk in the consciousness you will the portals that have been awaiting for you to come into them, you will now see the portals. Your eyes Amen. are open tonight. There is a Amen. there is a kindling of the spirit. So we we'll release Amen. testimonials. We we'll release realms. We we'll declare realms open, and we we'll declare the operations of the, of that supernatural realm open unto you now, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And Amen. God bless you. What's up? How? I love our noise, Abba. <laughs> God bless you. So um we so we come to the end of tonight. Please yes. as soon as a platform has been created, um, a platform has been created for the supernatural, even though we are going to collapse that platform. The truth is the school of supernatural is under the school of ascensions. Um I should have told her this earlier, but while I was in the when I was preparing for this meeting, the Lord just put it. I didn't even know she created a platform for it. But the Lord was showing me 